Story 1. The rain was relentless that night, hammering against the roof with the fury of a tempest scorned, a steady drumbeat that seemed to echo the turmoil swirling within me as I sat, up, huddled under the meager shelter of an abandoned bus stop on the outskirts of a town that felt as forsaken by hope as I was by choice. My decision to walk home in the face of an oncoming storm was born not from bravery but from a desperate need to clear my head, to find solace in the rhythm of nature's tears against the backdrop of an evening that had turned my world upside down, the revealing secrets and lies that had lurked in the shadows of my seemingly mundane existence. The journey began uneventfully, with the gentle patter of raindrops serving as a soothing backdrop to my troubled thoughts, each step forward a metaphor for my attempt to move past the revelations that had shattered my trust in those I held dear. As I ventured further, the storm intensified, its ferocity a mirror to the chaos within, the once comforting solitude now a prison as the darkness pressed in, obscuring the path ahead and leaving me adrift in a sea of uncertainty and fear. It was then, amidst the howling wind and the relentless downpour, that I first heard it a faint, barely discernible sound that seemed out of place against the natural orchestra of the storm, a series of soft, deliberate steps that mirrored my own yet belonged to no one I could see. The rational part of my mind urged me to dismiss it as a trick of the wind, the erratic heartbeat of the rain against a myriad of surfaces, but a primal, instinctive part of me recoiled in fear sensing an unseen presence that stalked me with a patience that belied malice. I quickened my pace, the sound of my own heartbeat now a thunderous accompaniment to the rain, each step a frantic attempt to escape the feeling of being hunted that clung to me as tightly as the cold, drenched clothes that weighed heavily on my body. The realization that I was no longer alone, that the shadows might conceal not just the unknown but a tangible threat, transformed the night from a backdrop for introspection into a stage for a primal dance of predator and prey, a dance in which I was unwillingly cast in the latter role. The lights of the town, once a beacon of safety, seemed impossibly distant, their glow obscured by sheets of rain that painted the world in shades of grey and shadow, a canvas on which my fears painted vivid pictures of danger lurking in every unseen corner, the behind every gust of wind that whispered secrets in a language I felt in my bones but could not understand. As I stumbled forward, the certainty that I was being followed grew stronger, a conviction not born of evidence but of an instinctive understanding of the nature of prey, a role I was now forced to play in a drama that had no script beyond survival. The sounds of pursuit grew louder, more confident, as if the entity that shadowed my steps was drawing closer, emboldened by my fear by the realization that the storm had not only isolated me from the world but had stripped away the veneer of civilization, leaving me vulnerable to the raw, the unspoken rules that govern the darkness. It was in that moment of despair, of utter helplessness, that I understood the true horror of my situation, not the fear of what might lurk in the shadows, but the realization that in the face of nature's fury and the unknown dangers it concealed, I was utterly alone, as a solitary figure against a backdrop of storm and shadow a narrative in which I had no control over the ending. The climax of my ordeal came not with a confrontation but with an epiphany, a moment of clarity amidst the chaos that allowed me to see not just the physical journey I had undertaken, but the emotional and psychological journey that mirrored it. The storm, with all its fury and unpredictability, was not just a physical obstacle but a manifestation of the turmoil within me, the chaos of feeling betrayed of having the foundations of my life upended by truths I could neither anticipate nor control and the unseen presence that followed me, that filled me with dread, was not just a physical threat but a symbol of the fears and doubts that stalked me, the insecurities and questions that mirrored my steps, always present, always lurking in the corners of my mind. In the end I emerged from the storm not unscathed but transformed, my journey through the rain a baptism of sorts, a cleansing of the soul that allowed me to face the uncertainties of my life with a newfound resilience. The fears that had pursued me, both real and imagined, had not vanished but had been faced, their power over me diminished by the act of survival, by the understanding that sometimes the storm within is as daunting as any tempest that nature can muster. And as I finally reached the sanctuary of my home, the rain still whispering secrets against the windows, I knew that while the night had been one of darkness and fear, it had also been a journey of discovery, a story in which I had played the role of both protagonist and narrator, a story of survival of facing the unknown, and of finding strength in the face of despair. As I sat in the dim light of my living room, 
the rain still tapping insistently at the windows, a profound sense of solitude enveloped me, not born of loneliness, but of the realization that some journeys must be undertaken alone, their lessons too personal, uh, too intertwined with the fabric of one's soul to be shared. The storm outside had lessened, its rage spent, leaving behind a world washed clean, its streets glistening under the weak glow of streetlights, a physical manifestation of my own catharsis. In the aftermath, the air seemed fresher, the darkness less oppressive, as if the storm had not only cleared the air but also swept away the shadows that had clung to my heart, leaving behind a clarity of purpose and a renewed sense of determination to face the challenges that lay ahead. I understood then that the true essence of fear is not in the anticipation of harm, but in the anticipation of facing the unknown, of stepping into the darkness without knowing what lies beyond. The presence that had followed me, whether real or a figment of my imagination amplified by my fears, served as a reminder that we are never truly alone in our struggles, that our fears, our doubts, and our insecurities are universal companions on the journey of life, silent witnesses to our moments of weakness and strength. As I reflected on my ordeal, I realized that the greatest stories are those that are lived, not told, experiences that shape us, mold us, and ultimately, define us. My story, a single thread in the tapestry of human experience, was a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, a narrative of survival against the odds, a story told in the rain. Story 2 The rain had always been a harbinger of change for me, a signal that the monotony of daily life was about to be disrupted often in ways that were as unpredictable as the path of the storm itself. That evening, as I left my office, the sky was a canvas of brooding clouds, heavy with the promise of a deluge, the air thick with anticipation. I decided to take a detour through the old part of the city, drawn by a nostalgic desire to revisit the haunts of my youth, places where memories lingered like ghosts, their whispers lost in the rustle of leaves and the quiet murmur of the impending rain. As I walked, the first drops began to fall, light and hesitant, as if the sky itself was reluctant to unleash the fury it held within. The streets, usually bustling with life, were deserted, the impending storm driving people to seek shelter, leaving the city to me and the ghosts of the past. The rain intensified, each drop a percussionist in the symphony of the storm, the sound a backdrop to my thoughts as I wandered aimlessly, lost in a sea of memories that the rain seemed to bring to the surface, each one a droplet in the ocean of my past. It was then, amidst the solitude and the silence broken only by the rain, that I stumbled upon it a small, unassuming cafe tucked away in an alley, its windows aglow with warm light, a beacon in the darkness. Drawn by an inexplicable urge, I pushed open the door and stepped inside, the warmth enveloping me like a long-lost embrace, the scent of coffee and old books a balm to my rain-soaked spirit. The cafe was empty save for the proprietor, a man of indeterminate age, who regarded me with a curious gaze, as if he had been expecting me yet was surprised by my arrival. I took a seat by the window, the rain now a torrent outside, the world reduced to a blur of water and light, a canvas on which the storm painted its masterpiece. The proprietor brought me a cup of coffee, its aroma rich and comforting, and as I sipped it he began to speak his voice a low rumble that seemed to blend with the sound of the storm, telling tales of the city, of its secrets and its scars, the stories that seemed too fantastic to be true yet too detailed to be fabrications. As he spoke, the boundary between reality and myth blurred, the storm outside a fitting backdrop to tales that span the spectrum of human emotion, from love lost and found to betrayals and reconciliations, each story a thread in the fabric of the city's soul, I realized then that this cafe, this unexpected haven from the storm, was more than just a place of refuge, it was a crossroads of sorts, a place where stories intersected, where the past and the present met, and the future was written not in the pages of books but in the hearts of those who sought shelter within its walls. The rain, relentless in its assault on the world outside, was a reminder that life too is a storm, unpredictable and often unforgiving, but also a source of renewal, of cleansing and growth. As the night wore on and the storm abated, the tales told by the proprietor took on a reflective quality, mirroring my own journey through the rain, a journey that had led me not just to this place of stories but to a deeper understanding of my own narrative, of the role that each of us plays in the tapestry of life. When I finally left the cafe, the world outside was transformed, the streets washed clean, the air crisp and new, 
as if the storm had swept away the veneer of everyday life to reveal the beauty and the mystery that lies beneath. My walk home was a contemplation, not just of the stories I had heard but of the story I was living, a realization that each of us is a storyteller, our lives in narrative shaped by the choices we make and the paths we choose to follow. The rain had ceased, but its lessons remained, a reminder that change is both inevitable and necessary, that the storms we face, both literal and metaphorical, are not just obstacles but opportunities, moments that challenge us to grow, to evolve and to emerge stronger and more resilient. As I reached my doorstep, the first light of dawn breaking on the horizon, I knew that this night, this journey through the rain, would remain with me, a chapter in my own story that I would cherish and reflect upon. For in the end, Life is a story told in the rain, a narrative of struggle and triumph, of loss and discovery, a story in which we are both authors and characters, writing our destinies one choice, one step, one drop at a time. As the dawn's early light filtered through the city, casting long shadows and illuminating the rain-soaked streets with a golden hue, I couldn't help but feel a profound sense of renewal, as if the night's journey through the storm had washed away the remnants of my past doubts and fears leaving behind a canvas upon which new dreams could be painted. The city around me felt different, not because it had changed in any physical sense, but because my perception of it had been altered through the stories shared and the introspective journey I had embarked upon. The streets, once mere pathways between destinations, now seemed like corridors of possibilities, each turn a new opportunity for discovery, every corner a testament to the resilience and depth of the human spirit. The cafe and its keeper, a guardian of tales and a bridge between the temporal and the eternal, had provided not just shelter from the storm but a sanctuary for the soul, a place where the weary traveler could rest and find solace in the stories of others. It dawned on me that stories are more than just words strung together, they are the essence of our shared human experience, a way for us to connect, to understand, and to find common ground despite our apparent differences. In sharing our stories, we not only preserve our history, but we weave the fabric of our collective future, each narrative a thread that strengthens the bond between us. Stepping into my home, the warmth and familiarity of its confines felt like an embrace, a welcome contrast to the tempestuous night. The journey through the rain had been a journey through the landscape of my own heart, a pilgrimage to the depths of my soul where fears and dreams reside side by side. As I reflected on the night's events, I realized that the true power of the storm lay not in its ability to disrupt and destroy, but in its capacity to cleanse and to reveal, to strip away the unnecessary and to focus the mind on what truly matters. Story 3 On this particular evening, as the forecast promised a storm of unprecedented magnitude, I found myself driving along a coastal road, the sea on one side raging against the shore, mirroring the tumultuous clouds above, the decision to drive through the night, to chase the storm as it skirted the coastline, was driven not by folly but by a yearning for something indefinable, a sense of connection to the primal forces of nature that seemed to call to something deep within me. The road was deserted, humanity having wisely chosen the safety of shelter over the tempestuous beauty of the storm, leaving me alone with my thoughts in the symphony of wind, rain, and waves. As the night progressed, the storm's intensity grew, each flash of lightning illuminating the landscape in stark, fleeting contrast, the thunder a companion that spoke in a language of power and majesty. It was in one such moment of illumination that I saw it, a figure standing on the edge of the cliff, silhouetted against the backdrop of the storm, immobile and seemingly unafraid of the fury that raged around them. The sight was so unexpected, so out of place in the context of the night's solitude, that I found myself slowing down, drawn by an inexplicable need to understand who this person was and why they stood alone against the storm. As I approached, the figure turned towards me, and in the brief moments when our eyes met, I felt a connection, a shared understanding that transcended words. They were not there to challenge the storm, but to embrace it, to find peace in the chaos, solace in the fury. I realized then that we were not so different, this stranger and I both seeking answers in the tempest, both finding a measure of comfort in the raw power of nature. We spoke not a word, for none were needed our presence there. On the edge of the world as it seemed, was communication enough, a silent acknowledgement of the storm's significance in our personal quest for meaning. The experience was transformative, 
A reminder that sometimes, in our search for answers, we find not what we seek, but what we need. The storm, with all its ferocity and unpredictability, was a mirror to our own inner turmoil, a physical manifestation of the struggles we face, the challenges we overcome, and the growth that comes from facing our fears. As I drove away, leaving the figure on the cliff to their vigil, I carried with me a sense of kinship, a bond forged not through conversation but through shared experience, a moment of connection in the midst of chaos. The rest of the journey was a reflection on that encounter, on the power of the storm to bring strangers together, to create moments of unexpected clarity and understanding. By the time I reached my destination, the storm had passed, leaving behind a calm that felt almost surreal in the wake of such intensity. The air was fresh, the world washed clean, and in the silence that followed, I found a peace I had not known I was seeking. The storm had been a catalyst, a force that drove me not just through the night but towards a deeper understanding of myself and the connections that bind us to each other and to the world around us. As the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, painting the sky in hues of gold and pink, I knew that this night, this journey through the storm, would remain with me, a pivotal chapter in my own story, a narrative of discovery, of connection, of and of the indomitable spirit of nature and humanity alike. In the end, it was not the storm that defined the experience, but the moments of clarity and connection it facilitated, a testament to the unexpected ways in which we find meaning and beauty in the midst of chaos. Whispering secrets to the retreating darkness, I pondered the unpredictable nature of existence, where moments of clarity often come shrouded in turmoil, teaching us lessons in the most unexpected of classrooms, the storm had been a masterful teacher, its lessons inscribed not in words but in the rhythm of the rain, the flash of lightning, and the solitary figure standing against the tempest, a testament to the strength and resilience of the human spirit. This encounter, brief as it was, served as a beacon, illuminating the path forward, not by dispelling the shadows but by teaching me to find my way through them, to embrace the uncertainty and find beauty in the chaos. As dawn broke, painting the sky with strokes of pink and orange, I realized that the storm had not only altered the landscape, but it also reshaped my understanding of my journey. It was as if the tempest had washed away the superficial layers of my perception, revealing beneath them a world rich with complexity and wonder, a world where storms were not just meteorological phenomena, but metaphors for the trials and tribulations of life. This realization brought with it a sense of peace, a calm acceptance of life's inherent unpredictability and a resolve to face the storms to come with the same courage and openness as the figure on the cliff. Story 4 That night, as I paced the confines of my small, cluttered apartment, the weather forecast promised a tempest that would rival the fury of the ages. The city, usually a cacophony of sounds and lights, seemed to hold its breath in anticipation. The usual hubbub quieted as if in reverence to the power of the approaching storm. Compelled by a restless energy that mirrored the gathering clouds, I ventured out, not to escape the storm but to meet it head on, to walk amidst the gathering fury and find solace in its unleashed power. The first drops of rain were like heralds, announcing the arrival of the tempest, each one a cold, sharp reminder of nature's indifference to human constructs and concerns. I walked without direction, my path determined by whims in the twisting, turning streets of the city, which seemed transformed under the dark, brooding sky. The buildings, usually stoic and unyielding, appeared to tremble under the weight of the heavens, their windows reflecting the strobe of lightning like the eyes of giants awakened from slumber. As the storm broke in earnest, its violence a stark contrast to the silence that had preceded it, I found myself drawn to the city's heart where the buildings climbed highest and the lights burned brightest. Here, amidst the steel and glass giants, the storm raged with particular vengeance, as if challenging the city's claim to the sky. Lightning arsed between buildings, thunder echoed off concrete and glass, and for a moment it felt as if the city itself was alive, its pulse quickening with the storm's rhythm. It was in this cathedral of human achievement and ambition that I realized the true scale of the storm, it was not merely a physical event, but a force that challenged the very essence of our existence, a reminder of our fragility and the temporary nature of our endeavors. Amidst the fury, I felt a profound connection to the world around me, a sense of being part of something greater, 
A narrative written, not in words, but in the elemental language of wind and rain. This realization did not bring fear, but a deep, resonating peace, the understanding that life, in all its complexity and chaos, was inherently beautiful. The storm, with its power and unpredictability, was a manifestation of that beauty, a natural masterpiece that dwarfed the creations of man. As I stood there, drenched and exhilarated, I knew that this moment, this confrontation with the raw power of nature, would stay with me, a touchstone for the times when life's storms seemed too much to bear. When the storm finally passed, leaving in its wake a world washed clean and silent, I returned to my apartment, my clothes heavy with rain but my heart light with the night's revelations. The tempest had been both a destroyer and a creator, leaving behind not just a physical but a spiritual landscape altered and renewed. In its aftermath, I understood that the storms we face, both literal and metaphorical, are not just challenges to be endured but opportunities for growth and renewal. As dawn crept over the city, the first light reflecting off wet streets and buildings, I felt a sense of gratitude for the storm and its lessons. It had been a reminder of the beauty and power of the natural world, a call to embrace life's unpredictability with courage and openness. The storm had passed, but its impact would linger, a catalyst for change and a source of enduring strength. In the quiet that followed the storm, as the first rays of dawn painted the world in hues of gold and silver, there was a palpable sense of rebirth in the air. The city, so often a maze of noise and frenzy, lay serene and subdued, its streets cleansed by the night's tempest, its buildings bathed in the gentle light of a new day. This tranquility, however fleeting, offered a moment of reflection, a pause in the relentless pace of life to appreciate the beauty that often goes unnoticed in our daily rush. The storm had been a powerful reminder of nature's might, but also of its grace, a force that could both devastate and renew, and in its aftermath the world seemed refreshed, as if given a second chance. Walking through the quiet streets I marveled at the clarity of the air, the vivid colors of the waking city, and the sense of calm that enveloped everything. The storm had stripped away the veneer of ordinariness, revealing the underlying wonder of the world around us a reminder that beauty and awe can be found even in the most tumultuous of times. It was a lesson in perspective, in finding the silver lining amidst the clouds, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the enduring allure of the natural world. This encounter with the storm, both violent and majestic, had been a journey of discovery, not just of the world outside but of the landscapes within, a pilgrimage through the heart of the tempest to find a deeper understanding of myself and my place in the tapestry of life. As I returned home, the storm's lessons etched into my memory, I carried with me a renewed sense of purpose and a profound appreciation for the complexities and contradictions of existence, the beautiful chaos that defines our world. Story 5 The evening promised nothing out of the ordinary, a routine closure to a day spent in the confines of my office, the hours ticking away in a blur of reports and meetings. Yet as I stepped outside, the air held a charge, an electric tension that hinted at the brewing storm, its distant rumblings a soft murmur against the city's din. The decision to walk home, a path taken many times under clearer skies, felt like a defiance of the storm's looming threat, a small rebellion against the encroaching chaos. As I walked, the city around me began to transform, the first drops of rain heralding the storm's approach a prelude to the symphony of nature's might that was about to unfold. The streets, usually alive with the vibrant hustle of evening activities, slowly emptied, as if the city itself sought shelter from the impending deluge. Yet, amidst this exodus, I felt a pull towards the heart of the storm, a desire to witness the raw beauty of nature's display, to stand witness to the power and majesty of the tempest. The rain began in earnest, a cascade of droplets that danced upon the pavement, a melody of nature that played upon the city's structures, transforming familiar landscapes into scenes of ethereal beauty. Lightning split the sky, its brilliant flashes illuminating the world in stark relief, the thunder that followed a rolling crescendo that spoke of nature's dominion over man's creations. It was in this chaos, this orchestration of elemental forces, that I found a profound sense of peace, a serenity that lay in the heart of the storm, a sanctuary from the turmoil of my own life. 
The storm's intensity grew, its fury a tangible presence that enveloped the city, yet within its embrace, I felt a connection to something greater, a part of a larger narrative that spanned the ages, a story of survival and resilience. The wind and rain, so often seen as harbingers of destruction, also spoke of renewal and growth, of the cycle of life that continues unabated, indifferent to human concerns. Standing there, soaked to the skin but invigorated by the storm's energy, I realized that we too are a part of this cycle, our lives intertwined with the rhythms of the natural world, our stories woven into the fabric of existence. This realization brought with it a sense of clarity, a understanding that the storms we face, both literal and metaphorical, are not merely obstacles to be overcome, but opportunities to grow, to learn, and to emerge stronger. The storm outside mirrored the storm within, a tumult of thoughts and emotions that had long needed release, a cleansing of the soul as much as the city. As the storm raged around me, I felt a release, a letting go of the burdens I had carried, a surrender to the forces beyond my control, and in that surrender, I found strength. The night wore on, and the storm's fury abated, the rain softening to a gentle patter, the thunder a distant echo. The city, so recently a scene of chaos, lay quiet and still, its streets washed clean, its buildings standing resilient against the night sky. As I made my way home, the storm's lessons lingered, a reminder of the beauty that can be found in the midst of chaos, the strength that comes from facing our fears, and the connections that bind us to the world and to each other. Reflecting on the aftermath of the storm, as the dawn began to break, casting a soft, ethereal light over the city, there was a sense of collective renewal that seemed to permeate the air. The streets, which had been battlegrounds for the Tempest's wrath, now lay serene and glistening with raindrops, each one a mirror to the world around, reflecting the beauty of a city reborn from the chaos of the night. This transformation, from turmoil to tranquility, served as a poignant metaphor for the resilience not only of the physical world but of the human spirit, a testament to our ability to weather the storms that life throws our way and emerge, not unscathed, but stronger and more resilient. Walking through the city in the aftermath of the storm, I was struck by the silence, a profound and encompassing quiet that seemed to hold the echoes of the night's fury, a reminder of the power of nature and the fragility of our existence within it. Yet, it was in this silence that I found a deep sense of connection to the world around me, a realization that, despite our differences, we are all subject to the same forces, all participants in the same cycle of destruction and renewal. The storm had been a great equalizer, a force that reminded us of our place in the natural order, and in its wake, it left a sense of unity, a shared experience that transcended the boundaries we often place between ourselves and others. This night, this journey through the heart of the storm, had been a pilgrimage of sorts, a journey into the depths of my own soul as well as the heart of nature's fury. I had sought the storm out of a need to feel alive, to break the monotony of existence, but what I found was a profound lesson in humility, in the power of nature to awe and inspire, and in the strength that comes from facing our fears and emerging on the other side. As I returned to the sanctuary of my home, the storm's lessons etched into my being. I carried with me a renewed sense of purpose, a deeper appreciation for the beauty and complexity of the world and a resolve to face the storms of life with courage and resilience. Story 6 The day had been oppressively hot, the kind of heat that seemed to press down from the sky, smothering the city in a blanket of stifling air that promised a storm on the horizon. As the sun began to set, painting the sky in hues of orange and red, the first signs of the approaching tempest became apparent, a change in the wind, a drop in the temperature, a sudden stillness that belied the coming fury. It was on this evening that I decided to take to the sea, to witness the storm from the deck of a small boat, to immerse myself in the elemental dance of wind and water, far from the safety of the shore. As I set out, the sea was a mirror to the sky, calm and serene, reflecting the last rays of the sun as it dipped below the horizon. Yet, as the darkness grew, so too did the wind, its gentle caresses turning to forceful gusts, heralding the arrival of the storm. The sea responded in kind, its surface rippling with the beginnings of waves that would soon grow to towering heights, a testament to the power of the unseen forces that moved beneath. Navigating through the growing swells, 
I felt a surge of exhilaration, a thrill at being at the mercy of the storm, a speck amidst the vastness of the sea and sky. The boat, sturdy yet insignificant against the might of the ocean, was a sanctuary of sorts, a vantage point from which to witness the raw beauty of the storm, unfiltered and unrestrained. Lightning lit up the sky, its jagged bolts a brilliant display of nature's artistry, the thunderous symphony that resonated with the deepest parts of my soul. In this moment, amidst the chaos of the storm, I found a profound peace, a sense of oneness with the world that transcended the fear and awe the tempest inspired. The storm, in all its fury, was not just a display of nature's might but a reminder of the beauty and power inherent in the world around us, a force that, while terrifying, also had the capacity to inspire and to cleanse. As the storm reached its crescendo, with waves crashing against the boat and wind howling through the rigging, I stood firm, a solitary figure against the tempest, finding strength in the knowledge that the storm would pass, that calm would return, and that in facing the fury of nature, that I had discovered not just the limits of my courage but the boundless potential of my spirit. This experience, this journey into the heart of the storm, would stay with me, a reminder of the indomitable will of the human soul and the enduring beauty of the natural world, a story of resilience and renewal told not through words but through the elemental dance of sea and sky. In the aftermath of the tempest, as the sea calmed and the sky cleared, revealing stars that shone with a clarity and intensity that seemed magnified by the storm's passing, I remained on deck reluctant to leave the scene of such raw power and beauty. The storm had passed, but its imprint lingered, not just on the surface of the ocean or in the charged air, but deep within me, a profound alteration in my understanding of the world and my place within it. This experience, this confrontation with the elemental forces of nature, had peeled back the layers of everyday concerns and distractions, revealing a core of strength and resilience I had not known I possessed. It was a reminder that, Amidst the chaos and tumult of life, there lies a potential for growth, for transformation, and for a deeper connection to the world around us. Reflecting on the night's events as I guided the boat back to harbor, the ocean around me a vast, tranquil expanse under the starlit sky, I realized that the storm had been a crucible, and a trial by wind and wave that had tested my limits but also revealed the boundless possibilities of the human spirit. In seeking the storm, I had sought to escape the monotony of the mundane, to feel alive in the face of nature's fury, but what I found was far more valuable a sense of peace and purpose, a connection to the natural world that was both humbling and exhilarating. This journey through the storm, this dance with the tempest, had not been an escape but a pilgrimage, a journey toward understanding and acceptance, a testament to the beauty of the natural world and the resilience of the human heart. As the lights of the harbor came into view, Marking the end of my voyage, I knew that I would carry the lessons of the storm with me, a guiding light through the challenges and storms that lay ahead, a reminder of the strength that comes from facing our fears and embracing the beauty of the world in all its tumultuous, magnificent glory. Story 7 The day had dawned clear and bright, the sun casting dappled shadows through the dense canopy of the forest that surrounded the village, a haven of peace in simplicity seemingly untouched by the outside world. Yet, as the hours passed, a sense of unease began to permeate the air, a whisper among the trees that spoke of an approaching storm, a tempest that carried with it more than just wind and rain. It was as if the forest itself was holding its breath, waiting for the inevitable eruption of nature's fury that would lay bare the secrets hidden in its depths. As the sky darkened, and the first tendrils of wind began to stir the leaves into a frenetic dance. I felt a pull towards the forest, an inexplicable need to witness the storm's approach from within the heart of the woods. The village, with its quaint cottages and cobblestone paths, seemed suddenly confining, too small to contain the restlessness that stirred within me. I set out, drawn by the siren call of the wind and the promise of discovery, stepping into the forest as the first drops of rain began to fall soft and hesitant, like the prelude to a symphony of untamed wilderness. The forest transformed under the influence of the storm, its familiar paths and clearings obscured by a veil of rain, its sounds amplified into a cacophony of rustling leaves, creaking branches, and the distant roar of thunder. 
I moved deeper into the woods, guided by an inner compass that seemed attuned to the rhythm of the storm, each step taking me further from the world I knew and deeper into a realm of mystery and enchantment. As the storm unleashed its fury, the forest around me came alive with a raw, primal energy, a force that resonated with the untamed part of my soul that yearned for freedom and adventure. The rain, relentless and invigorating, washed away the veneer of civilization, leaving me exposed to the elements, a creature of the earth and sky. Lightning illuminated the forest in brief, brilliant flashes, revealing glimpses of a world that seemed at once alien and achingly familiar, a landscape of shadows and secrets that beckoned me to explore its depths. In the heart of the storm, amidst the tumult of wind and water, I stumbled upon an ancient clearing, a sacred space that felt untouched by time, its ground carpeted with moss and ringed with towering trees that stood as sentinels over this hidden sanctuary. It was here, in this place of power and tranquility, that I understood the true nature of the storm. It was not merely a physical phenomenon, but a catalyst for change, a force that could awaken the deepest parts of ourselves and the world around us, with revealing truths long hidden and paths long forgotten. The storm raged on, but within the clearing, there was a sense of peace, a stillness that spoke of the enduring strength of the natural world and the interconnectedness of all living things. As I stood there drenched and exhilarated, I realized that this journey through the storm was not just an escape from the confines of the village but a pilgrimage into the heart of the forest and the soul, a quest for understanding and connection that transcended the boundaries of the physical world. The storm eventually passed, leaving behind a world transformed, its air fresh with the scent of rain-soaked earth, its colors vivid and alive in the aftermath of the tempest. As I made my way back to the village, the forest around me a whispering companion, I knew that I had been changed by the experience by the storm and the secrets it had unveiled. I returned not just to the physical space of the village but to a life enriched by the knowledge of the hidden depths within the world and within myself, a life forever altered by the journey through the storm. In the wake of the storm, as the village emerged from the embrace of the tempest, the world seemed reborn, a wash in the vibrant hues of nature rejuvenated and spirits lifted. The journey back from the sacred heart of the forest was not merely a physical return but a spiritual reawakening, each step infused with a newfound appreciation for the delicate balance of life, the intertwined dance of nature and humanity. This experience, this venture into the unknown driven by the forces of the storm, had peeled back the layers of reality, revealing a deeper truth beneath the surface of everyday life, a truth that spoke of ancient connections, of the Earth's raw power and beauty, and of our place within this grand tapestry. As I returned to the village, the familiar sights greeted me like the pages of a well-loved book, each corner and cobblestone path imbued with a deeper significance, as if the storm had not only cleansed the land, but had also clarified my vision, allowing me to see the world in a new light. The villagers, too, seemed touched by the storm's transformative power, their faces reflecting a spectrum of emotions, from awe and wonder to a serene acceptance of nature's dominion. It was as if the storm had served as a communal rite of passage, a shared ordeal that had drawn us closer, binding us together with invisible threads of mutual respect and understanding. This reconnection with the village, with its people and rhythms, felt like a reaffirmation of life's cyclical nature, of the endless cycle of growth, decay and renewal that defines our existence. The storm had been a reminder of our vulnerability but also of our resilience, a demonstration of nature's indifferent might that, paradoxically, served to highlight the strength and beauty of the human spirit. In its aftermath, the world appeared more vivid, more alive as if each leaf, each drop of water, held within it a universe of possibility, a promise of renewal and hope. Story 8 The city, usually a bastion of human achievement and bustling activity, felt oddly still as the storm approached, the usual cacophony of sounds dimming to a hushed anticipation. From my apartment high above the streets, the view of the cityscape seemed a prelude to an impending drama, the darkening sky a backdrop against which the unfolding story of human endurance and nature's power would be set. 
The decision to witness the storm from this urban eerie was born out of a desire to understand, to see firsthand the interaction between the man-made world and the elemental forces that shape our planet. As the first gusts of wind swept through the streets, sending papers swirling and bending trees to their will, the city seemed to brace itself, its towering structures standing defiant against the gathering dark. The rain began as a whisper, a gentle murmur against the windows, before escalating into a torrential downpour, a vertical river that blurred the boundaries between earth and sky, transforming the familiar into the surreal. The storm's arrival turned day into night, its clouds a blanket that obscured the sun, plunging the city into an eerie twilight. From my vantage point, the spectacle was both awe-inspiring and humbling, a reminder of the fragile coexistence between human civilization and the natural world. Lightning like veins of pure energy traced across the sky, illuminating the city in flashes of stark, white light, revealing the stark beauty of the urban landscape under siege. The thunder, when it came, was a primal sound, a roar that echoed off buildings and through streets, a voice of nature that demanded to be heard, a sound that resonated with something ancient and instinctual within me. In this confrontation between the city and the storm, there was a dialogue, a negotiation of space and power. The storm, with its wind, rain, and lightning, was a force of change, challenging the permanence of concrete and steel, reminding us of the impermanence of our constructs, the temporary nature of our dominion. Yet within this chaos there was a pattern, a rhythm that spoke of cycles and systems of the interconnectedness of all things. The city, for all its hardness and complexity, was part of a larger ecosystem, subject to the same laws and forces that govern the forest and the sea. This realization, as the storm raged around me, was a moment of clarity, a glimpse into the heart of existence itself, where the line between the natural and the artificial blurred, where humanity and nature were revealed, not as adversaries but as partners in the dance of life. As the storm passed and the city emerged, battered but unbroken, the air clear and fresh, the streets washed clean, there was a sense of collective achievement, a shared resilience that bound together all who had weathered the storm, with a testament to the enduring spirit of humanity and the awe-inspiring power of the natural world. Reflecting on the calm that followed the storm's passage through the city, I stood at my window, observing the transformation below. The streets, once veiled in the storm's gray shroud, now sparkled under a newly emerged sun, their wet surfaces reflecting the light in a myriad of tiny rainbows. The people, who had sought refuge from the tempest's wrath, slowly ventured out, their movements tentative at first, then growing more confident, as if the shared ordeal of the storm had rekindled a sense of community, a collective resilience that had been dormant beneath the hustle of city life. It was a poignant reminder of the city's ability to endure, to emerge from the chaos of the storm not weakened, but stronger, its foundations tested but unshaken. The aftermath of the storm was not just about the physical cleanup, the removal of debris, or the restoration of services. It was about the renewal of spirit, a communal catharsis that had washed away the barriers of isolation, reminding us of our inherent interconnectedness, our shared vulnerability to the forces of nature, and our collective strength in facing them. The city, with its towering buildings and sprawling infrastructure, stood not as a monument to human arrogance, but as a testament to our ingenuity, our capacity to create and to adapt, to find beauty and purpose, even in the face of nature's fury. This experience, watching the city withstand the storm, served as a powerful metaphor for the human condition, a reflection of our own inner storms, the personal challenges and trials we face. Just as the city had weathered the storm, emerging transformed but intact, so too do we possess the ability to confront our own tempests, to navigate through periods of turmoil and uncertainty, and to emerge stronger, more resilient, and more connected to those around us. Story 9 The cabin, nestled among towering pines and rugged peaks, had been a refuge a place of solace and solitude where I could escape the cacophony of the world and listen instead to the whispers of the wind and the tales of the trees. It was here, in this secluded sanctuary, that I found myself on the eve of a storm, unlike any other, a tempest that, unbeknownst to me, would serve as the catalyst for a profound personal transformation. As the day faded into evening, 
The first signs of the storm's approach became evident in the shift of the wind, in the uneasy rustle of the leaves, and in the heavy, expectant silence that settled over the forest. The sky, once a canvas of soft blues and gentle pinks, darkened to a brooding palette of grays and blacks, the clouds amassing like an army at the horizon, ready to descend upon the land. Seated at the window of the cabin, I watched as the first skirmishes of the storm began, the distant rumble of thunder a harbinger of the chaos to come. The wind picked up, its howls a mournful lament that echoed through the valleys and around the peaks, stirring within me a sense of unease, a premonition that this storm would be a journey, not just through the tempest outside, but through the storms that raged within my own heart. As night enveloped the cabin, the storm unleashed its fury a maelstrom of wind, rain, and thunder that shook the very foundations of my retreat. But it was not the storm's power that filled me with dread, but the memories it awakened, the ghosts of the past that it summoned from the depths of my mind, each flash of lightning illuminating not just the room in which I sat, but the corners of my soul I had long sought to leave in darkness. In the heart of the storm, with nowhere to run and no way to hide, I was forced to confront these specters, to face the regrets and mistakes that I had buried beneath layers of denial and self-deception. The cabin, once a haven, now felt like a prison, the storm outside a reflection of the turmoil within, a battle between the person I had been and the one I sought to become. As the night progressed and the storm reached its zenith, I realized that this confrontation was not a punishment, but a chance for redemption an opportunity to make peace with my past and to forge a path forward. The storm, with all its sound and fury, was a cleansing force, stripping away the illusions and pretenses, leaving me raw and exposed, but also ready to begin anew. When dawn broke, the storm had passed, leaving the world outside transformed, washed clean by the rain, its air fresh and clear, its beauty renewed. And within the cabin, within myself, there was a similar transformation, a sense of peace and clarity that had come from facing the storm, from navigating through the darkness to find the light. In the tranquil aftermath of the storm, as the sun rose, casting its warm glow over the landscape, the forest around the cabin came alive with the sounds of dripping leaves and birdsong, a serene chorus that celebrated the new day. This moment of calm was more than just a break in the weather, it was a symbolic awakening a testament to the resilience not only of the natural world but of the human spirit. The storm had been a relentless teacher, its lessons harsh but necessary, pushing me to confront my inner demons, to acknowledge and accept my flaws and failures, and to understand that true strength lies in the ability to face one's own vulnerabilities and emerge stronger. As I stepped outside the cabin, the air fresh with the scent of pine and wet earth, I felt a profound connection to the world around me a sense of belonging to something larger than myself. The storm had stripped away the barriers I had built, not just between myself and the natural world, but between the different parts of myself, allowing me to see the interconnectedness of all things, the delicate balance between darkness and light, chaos and order. This journey through the storm, both literal and metaphorical, was a pivotal moment in my life, a point of departure from the path I had been on, leading me toward a future where I could embrace my past, not as a chain that bound me, but as a foundation upon which I could build a more authentic, more fulfilling life. The lessons of the storm, learned in the heart of the tempest, would guide me, reminding me that every storm brings with it the promise of renewal, of growth, and of transformation. Story 10 The town, with its weathered buildings and salt air ambiance, had always been a place of simple pleasures and enduring traditions, a community knit together by the shared rhythms of sea and sky. Yet, as reports of the approaching storm began to dominate conversations, a palpable tension took hold, a collective apprehension that this tempest might bring more than just wind and water, that it might lay bare the hidden fissures within the community, exposing long-buried secrets and truths. As the sky darkened and the sea churned, the townspeople fortified their homes and businesses against the onslaught, each nail hammered and bored secured a testament to their determination to weather the storm together. Yet beneath this unified front, there were those among them for whom the storm's approach awakened deeper fears, not of the damage it would bring to their property, but of the impact it might have on the delicate balance of their lives. Among these was a family whose roots in the town ran as deep as the ancient oaks that lined the main street, 
a family whose history was intertwined with the very fabric of the community. As they prepared for the storm, securing the windows and doors of their ancestral home, the matriarch of the family felt a sense of foreboding, an intuition that the coming storm would test them in ways they had never imagined, this forcing them to confront the shadows of their past and the secrets that had been carefully, painstakingly hidden. As the first bands of the storm lashed the coast, the power of the sea manifesting in towering waves and ferocious winds, the family gathered in the safety of their home, the sound of the tempest a constant roar that seemed to shake the very foundations of their world. It was in this crucible, with the storm raging around them, that truths long suppressed began to surface, the pressure of the impending disaster forcing hidden tensions and unresolved conflicts into the open, challenging the bonds of blood and loyalty that had held the family together. The storm, relentless and unforgiving, became a metaphor for the turmoil within the family, a force of nature that mirrored their own internal struggles, a catalyst for change that offered both destruction and the possibility of renewal. As the night wore on and the storm reached its peak, the family found themselves facing not just the fury of the elements, but the storm within their hearts, a tempest of emotions and revelations that threatened to tear them apart. Yet, as dawn broke and the storm's fury abated, leaving behind a landscape forever altered, the family emerged from their ordeal not weakened, but fortified, their relationships tested but ultimately strengthened by the shared experience of facing the tempest together. The storm had been a reckoning, a confrontation with the past that had paved the way for reconciliation and healing, a chance to rebuild not just their home, but their lives on foundations of truth and understanding. In the aftermath of the storm, as the residents of the small coastal town emerged from their shelters, there was a palpable sense of unity and shared relief that permeated the salt-tinged air. The landscape bore the scars of the night's fury, with uprooted trees and debris strewn about. Yet amidst the devastation, there was an undeniable spirit of resilience. Neighbors helped each other clear the remnants of the storm, reinforcing the bonds of community that had been tested but not broken by nature's onslaught. This collective endeavor to rebuild and restore not only the physical structures but the fabric of the community itself marked a new chapter for the town, a testament to their enduring strength and solidarity. The family at the center of our tale, having weathered the storm within their home and hearts, found themselves at the forefront of the recovery efforts, their actions a reflection of their newfound understanding and unity. The secrets that had once threatened to divide them now served as the foundation for a deeper connection a mutual respect born from the acknowledgement of their shared vulnerabilities and the recognition that forgiveness and acceptance were the keys to moving forward. As the town rebuilt, so too did the family, their home restored not just in brick and mortar but in spirit and purpose. The storm had laid bare the illusions of control and permanence, revealing the true essence of life's unpredictability and the value of cherishing the present, embracing each moment with gratitude and openness. Story 11. The city, accustomed to the relentless pace of urban life, came to an unexpected standstill as the snow began to fall, its flakes a gentle yet persistent force that accumulated with surprising speed, covering streets, vehicles, and buildings in a pristine layer of white. The usual sounds of traffic and chatter were muffled by the snow's insulating blanket, creating an atmosphere of hushed tranquility rarely experienced in the heart of the metropolis. Among the city's diverse tapestry of residents was a young artist, struggling with creative block and the pressures of making a name for themselves in the competitive art world. The snowstorm, with its ability to transform the mundane into the magical, offered an unexpected source of inspiration, a canvas of pure potential that beckoned the artist to see their environment through new eyes. As the artist ventured out into the snow-covered streets, their perspective shifted. The stark contrasts and softened edges of the cityscape igniting a spark of creativity that had lain dormant. The world around them, so often perceived through the lens of routine and familiarity, now revealed its hidden beauty, each snowflake a reminder of the uniqueness of perspective, the infinite possibilities that exist within the ordinary. The city, silenced and slowed by the snow, became a place of reflection and connection, as neighbors, often strangers in the bustling flow of daily life, came together to navigate the challenges of the storm. Streets usually dominated by vehicles were reclaimed by pedestrians, their laughter and conversations filling the air, 
creating a sense of community and belonging amidst the icy beauty of the urban winter wonderland. For the artist, the snowstorm became a metaphor for the creative process, the blank canvas of the city mirroring the blank canvas in their studio, both awaiting the transformative touch of vision and effort. Inspired by the beauty and camaraderie experienced during the storm, the artists returned to their work with a renewed sense of purpose and enthusiasm, their art infused with the themes of contrast, resilience, and the shared human experience of finding beauty in the unexpected. In the days following the snowstorm, the city slowly returned to its usual rhythm, the pristine blanket of snow yielding to the footsteps of daily life and the gradual return of traffic. However, the memory of the city's brief interlude of silence and beauty lingered in the minds of its residents, a shared experience that fostered a sense of unity and appreciation for the often overlooked moments of tranquility amidst urban chaos. The artists, in particular, found themselves profoundly affected by the experience, their subsequent works reflecting a newfound depth and introspection, capturing not just the visual but the emotional landscape of the city transformed by snow. This period of enforced stillness and the collective effort to navigate the challenges posed by the storm served as a reminder of the city's resilience and the indomitable spirit of its inhabitants. It was a testament to the ability of individuals and communities to come together in times of need, to find joy and beauty in the face of adversity, and to emerge stronger and more connected. But the artist's work, inspired by the snow-covered city, resonated with audiences, serving as a visual and emotional record of the storm's impact, a narrative of contrast, adaptation, and the enduring human capacity for renewal. As the seasons changed and the snow melted away, the city and its people carried forward the lessons of the storm, a collective acknowledgement of the importance of pausing, reflecting, and connecting. The artist, once struggling to find their voice, now stood as a testament to the transformative power of nature and the creative inspiration that can be found in the most unexpected of circumstances. Their art became a bridge between the individual and the communal, a celebration of the city's spirit and a reminder of the fleeting beauty that can emerge from the chaos of everyday life. Story 12 The relentless rain had been pouring for days, turning the quaint streets of my small town into a scene straight out of a melancholic film. It was on one such evening, with the rain hammering against my windows, that I found myself trapped in a narrative I never thought would be mine. The constant downpour had a way of isolating us, creating a bubble where only the most unexpected could happen, and happen it did. I had always been an admirant of solitude, finding solace in my own company, surrounded by the comfort of my home, but that night, as the storm intensified, I felt an unease creeping up on me, a sensation I couldn't shake off. It was then I realized that the storm outside was nothing compared to the storm brewing within me, a prelude to an encounter that would forever change my perspective on the quiet life I so cherished. As the night progressed, the power flickered and went out, leaving me in darkness. The only illumination came from the occasional lightning that tore through the sky, each flash a photographer's snapshot of my growing fear. I decided to brave the storm to check on my elderly neighbor, Mrs. Patterson, who lived alone. She had always said the rain made her feel alive, but on that night I feared it might prove too much for her. I wrapped myself in my coat, stepping out into the storm, the rain instantly soaking through my clothes. Each step felt heavier, not just from the water weighing me down, but from a sense of dread I couldn't explain. When I reached Mrs. Patterson's house, I knocked on her door, only to find it slightly ajar. Concern overtook my hesitation, and I pushed the door open, calling out for her. Mrs. Patterson, it's me, I shouted over the sound of the rain, but only silence greeted me. As I ventured further inside, the lightning revealed a home untouched by time, photographs of days gone by adorning the walls, each telling a story of happiness and loss but it was the absence of life that struck me the most, an eerie stillness that hung in the air. In the living room, I found her, sitting by the window, her gaze lost in the storm outside. Relief washed over me, but as I approached her, I realized something was off. Mrs. Patterson turned to me, her eyes reflecting a depth of sadness I had never seen before. She spoke of a man, a figure she had seen wandering the streets on stormy nights like these, 
a man who seemed out of place, out of time. Curiosity peaked. I peered out into the rain, half expecting to see this mysterious figure. And there he was, standing across the street, his gaze fixed on Mrs. Patterson's house. He was an anachronism, dressed in clothes that seemed to belong to another era, his presence inexplicable. I blinked, and he was gone, as if swallowed by the night itself. The encounter left me with more questions than answers. Who was he? What did he want? The following days saw me consumed by the mystery, the town's history revealing tales of lost travelers, of people who appeared and vanished with the rain. It was said they were omens, heralds of change or tragedy. The rain eventually ceased, but the man's image haunted me. I found myself walking the streets at night, searching for him, driven by a need to understand. And then on another stormy night I saw him again, this time he beckoned to me. Against all reason I followed, led by the ghost of curiosity, to the outskirts of town, to an old graveyard long forgotten. There, amid the tombstones eroded by time, he vanished, leaving me alone with the whispers of the past. It was there I discovered his grave, a marker bearing his name and the date of his death, centuries ago. The realization hit me like a wave I had been chasing a ghost, a fragment of history etched into the fabric of the town. The encounter with the man in the rain taught me a lesson in life, in the threads that connect us to the past, to the stories untold and forgotten. It reminded me of the fragility of our existence, of the mysteries that lie in wait, hidden beneath the veil of the ordinary. Story 13 The rain had always brought a sense of renewal, washing away the old to make way for the new. That's what I thought until the night I learned some things are better left untouched, buried under the weight of their own history. On this particular evening, the rain wasn't just a cleansing force, it was a harbinger of a revelation I was not prepared for. Living on the outskirts of a bustling city afforded me the luxury of quiet nights, disturbed only by the occasional sounds of nature and the rare car passing by. My house, a modest two-story affair, overlooked a dense forest, which on that rainy night seemed even more impenetrable, a dark abyss staring back at me. It was the perfect setting for a peaceful life, or so I believed. The storm that evening was fierce, the wind howling like a chorus of lost souls, the rain a constant drum beat against my windows. It was during this cacophony that I heard it, a faint knocking, so soft it could have been mistaken for a branch tapping against the glass. Curiosity, coupled with a touch of apprehension, drove me to investigate, leading me to my front door. Opening the door revealed a sight that took my breath away, not because of fear, but because of its sheer impossibility. A child stood on my doorstep, soaked to the bone, her eyes wide with an unspoken plea. How she had arrived there, in the midst of such a storm, was a mystery. Her presence filled me with a sense of urgency, a need to protect and shelter her from the storm's fury. I ushered her inside, wrapping her in blankets, and prepared a warm drink to chase away the cold. As she sat, shivering and silent, I attempted to glean her story, asking where she came from and if there was anyone I could call. Her answers when she gave them were vague, leading nowhere, her past a puzzle I couldn't piece together. As the night progressed, her demeanor changed, a palpable tension filling the room. She spoke of her home, not in the terms one would expect, but as if describing a place out of time, a place that the rain had hidden from the world, a secret nestled in the heart of the forest. Her words were cryptic, yet they painted a picture of a life so far removed from my understanding. It felt as though she spoke of another world entirely. Driven by a mix of concern and an insatiable need for answers, I decided to brave the storm once more, the child's directions leading me deeper into the forest than I had ever ventured before. The rain guided my steps, a constant companion as I navigated the treacherous terrain, the darkness a cloak that obscured the world around me. What I found in the heart of the forest defied explanation. An old house, if one could call it that, a structure so out of place, it seemed to defy the very laws of time and space. It sat there, untouched by the elements, a silent sentinel in the night. The child had led me to her home, a place that should not exist, yet there it stood, a testament to the unknown. 
The realization that the world was far more complex and mysterious than I had ever imagined was both terrifying and exhilarating. The child, or perhaps the guardian of this secret place, offered no explanations, her smile a cryptic curve that spoke volumes of the mysteries that lay hidden in the ordinary. Returning home, the forest seemed to close in around me, a reminder that there were places and stories woven into the fabric of our world that were not meant to be discovered. The child remained a mystery, her origins and purpose a secret preserved by the rain in the forest that had concealed her existence. That night changed me, opening my eyes to the wonders and horrors that lie in wait, hidden beneath the surface of our daily lives. The rain, once a symbol of renewal, now carried the weight of secrets, of lives and worlds that existed parallel to our own, a reminder of the delicate balance that governs our existence. In the days following my nocturnal adventure, the world around me seemed altered, as if the very fabric of reality had been stretched thin, revealing the undercurrents of the unknown that flowed beneath. The child, who had appeared on my doorstep and led me to the brink of another world, had vanished by morning, leaving no trace behind except for a lingering sense of wonder and unease. I found myself drawn to the forest, day after day, in search of the house that should not exist. Yet each time it eluded me, as if it were a mirage, a figment of my imagination that dissolved upon closer inspection. The forest, once a place of solace, now whispered secrets in a language I could not understand, each leaf and shadow imbued with a story untold. The rain returned as it always did, but now it spoke to me, its voice a mixture of comfort and warning, a reminder of the night when the boundaries between worlds had thinned. I realized then that some mysteries were not meant to be solved, that some doors, once opened, could never be closed again. This encounter with the unknown had left its mark, a scar upon the mundane fabric of my existence, a constant reminder of the night when the rain had revealed its true nature, not as a destroyer, but as a guardian of the secrets that lay hidden in the heart of the world. Story 14 The sound of rain has always been a lullaby for the soul, a soothing symphony that promised rest and renewal. Yet, on that fateful night the melody turned sinister, a prelude to a series of events that would unravel the thin veneer of normalcy I had wrapped around my life. I lived in a small coastal town, the kind where everyone knew everyone else's business, a place where secrets were hard to keep. Yet it was here, amidst the familiarity and routine, that I stumbled upon a secret so profound it threatened to undo everything I thought I knew about my home, my friends, and myself. The evening began like any other, with the rain setting the stage for a quiet night indoors. However, the tranquility was shattered by a frantic knock at my door, urgent and insistent. I opened it to find Tom, a childhood friend, his face pale and eyes wide with fear. Something's out there, he gasped, rainwater streaming down his face. In the rain, I saw it moving in the shadows, it's not human. His words sent a chill down my spine. Tom was not one to scare easily, and the terror in his voice was unmistakable. Without a second thought, I grabbed a flashlight and followed him into the storm, driven by a mix of concern and an unspoken fear of what lay beyond the reach of our lights. We trudged through the rain-soaked streets, our flashlights piercing the darkness, revealing nothing but the empty night. Tom led me to the beach, the place where he claimed to have seen the figure. The sea, a dark expanse beyond the reach of our lights, roared in the darkness, its waves crashing against the shore with a fury that mirrored my growing apprehension. It was here Tom whispered, his light scanning the beach. I saw it standing by the water looking at me. Then it just vanished. We stood there, the rain and the sea the only sounds in the night our lights futile against the vast darkness. It was then that I saw it, a shadow among shadows, a form that seemed to flicker and shift, barely perceptible. It was watching us, a silent observer from the depths of the night. The realization that we were not alone, that something undefined and unknown shared our world, was overwhelming. Fear rooted us to the spot, our minds grappling with the impossibility of what we were witnessing. Then, as suddenly as it appeared, the figure retreated into the darkness, leaving us with more questions than answers. The rest of the night passed in a blur, Tom and I retreating to the safety of my home, our minds racing with speculation and fear. 
What had we seen? Was it a trick of the light, a figment of our imagination, or something else entirely? The rain continued to fall, a constant reminder of the night's events, of the unknown that lurked just beyond our understanding. In the days that followed, our town was abuzz with rumors and whispered tales of shadows in the rain, of figures seen in the periphery, of a presence that defied explanation. Our experience had opened a door to the unknown, casting a shadow over our once peaceful town. I realized then that the world was far more complex and mysterious than I had ever imagined, that the rain, with its ability to obscure and reveal, held secrets of its own. It was a humbling and terrifying revelation, a reminder of the thin veil that separates the known from the unknown, the seen from the unseen. As the rain continued to fall, washing away the remnants of that night, I couldn't help but wonder what other secrets lay hidden in the heart of the storm, waiting to be discovered. In the wake of that unsettling encounter on the beach, my nights became restless, haunted by the shadow that had watched us from the darkness. The image of it, so fleeting yet so profoundly disturbing, played on repeat in my mind. The rain, once a comforting presence, now felt like a veil behind which unknown horrors could lurk, unseen yet palpably close. I began to research, digging into local lore and history, searching for any clue that might shed light on what Tom and I had witnessed. The deeper I dug, the more I realized that our town, with its picturesque facade, harbored a history replete with tales of the unexplained. Stories of shadows that walked in the rain, of whispers carried on the wind, of figures that appeared only to vanish into the mist's tales dismissed as superstition by most, but I couldn't help but wonder. One evening, as the rain pattered gently against my window, I stumbled upon an old journal at the local library. Its pages, yellowed with age, contained the account of a lighthouse keeper from over a century ago. He spoke of nights when the rain seemed to bring more than just stormy seas, of times when he saw figures moving along the shoreline, figures that did not belong to any ship or local folk. His descriptions mirrored what Tom and I had seen, a realization that sent shivers down my spine. It became clear to me that what we had encountered was not new, that it was part of a cycle, a recurring phenomenon that defied explanation. The thought was both terrifying and exhilarating. We had brushed against something ancient, a mystery woven into the very fabric of the town, hidden in plain sight yet unseen, waiting for the rain to reveal its secrets once more. The more I learned, the more I became convinced that these occurrences were a call to those who would listen, an invitation to gaze beyond the mundane and acknowledge the extraordinary mysteries that lie just beyond our comprehension. And so I wait for the rain, for the next time the veil is lifted, ready to explore the mysteries it reveals. Story 15 The relentless drizzle had been my constant companion as I walked the deserted streets of my hometown, returning after years away. The place seemed unchanged, frozen in time, yet beneath its familiar surface I sensed something different, a tension in the air that I couldn't quite place. My family's old house stood at the end of a leaf-strewn lane, its windows dark, the garden overgrown. As I approached, the weight of countless memories bore down on me, each step a journey through the past. The house, once filled with laughter and warmth, now felt like a shell its soul long since departed. I had come back to settle affairs, to finally close the chapter on this part of my life. Yet, as I stood before the door, key in hand, I hesitated. It wasn't just the melancholy of returning to a place once called home, it was something else a whisper of unease that fluttered at the edge of my consciousness. Pushing aside my apprehension, I entered, the house greeting me with silence. I wandered through the rooms, each a tableau of a life once lived, now just echoes in the dust. It was in the living room that I found it, an unopened letter addressed to me, the handwriting unmistakably my father's, dated years after his death. The contents of the letter were as impossible as its existence. My father spoke of a secret, a burden he had carried alone, something that had compelled him to keep us away from the house in the final years of his life. He wrote of the rain, of how it brought something with it, something ancient and malevolent, a darkness that lurked in the shadows of our home. I couldn't comprehend how the letter had come to be, how my father could have reached out from beyond the grave, 
The rational part of my mind screamed denial, yet the fear that gripped my heart was real. As the rain intensified, tapping against the windows like impatient fingers, I felt the first stirrings of panic. Driven by a need for answers, I began to search the house, uncovering clues that led me deeper into a mystery I was only beginning to understand. Old photographs, newspaper clippings, my father's journals, each piece of the puzzle revealing a history of strange occurrences linked to our family, to this house, stretching back generations. Night had fallen, a cloak of darkness enveloping the house, the rain a constant murmur in the background. It was then that I heard it, a sound that chilled me to the bone footsteps, slow and deliberate, moving through the house. The realization that I was not alone, that the secret my father had warned me about was all too real, set my heart racing. Armed with only a flashlight, I followed the sound, each step taking me closer to the heart of the darkness that had haunted my family. What I found in the depths of the house challenged everything I believed about the world, a revelation so profound it threatened to unravel the fabric of my reality. In a hidden room, behind walls that whispered of forgotten horrors, lay the source of the curse that had plagued us. An ancient artifact, its origins lost to time, pulsated with a malevolent energy, its presence of light upon the land, drawing forth the darkness that accompanied the rain. The truth was clear my family had been guardians of this curse, a legacy passed down through the ages, each generation tasked with containing its power. My father's death had broken the chain, leaving the curse unbound its darkness free to seep into the world once more. With the rain as my witness, I knew what I had to do. The artifact had to be destroyed, its hold on my family on this place broken once and for all. The task was daunting, fraught with danger, but the alternative was to allow the darkness to consume everything I held dear. As I prepared to confront the curse, to end the cycle that had ensnared my family, I realized that some stories, some truths, are too vast to be contained within the pages of history. They live on whispered by the rain, carried on the wind, a reminder of the thin veil that separates the known from the unknown, the light from the darkness. Story 16 The village of Yildor had always been a place out of sync with time, its cobblestone streets and ancient cottages a testament to a past that clung stubbornly to the present. I arrived on a rainy autumn evening, the kind where the horizon blends seamlessly with the sea, and the world seems wrapped in a cloak of mist and mystery. My purpose in Ildor was simple to escape. The city had become too much, its noise drowning out my thoughts, its pace leaving me breathless. I sought solace in solitude, a place where I could breathe, think, and perhaps find a piece of myself that had been lost in the chaos of urban life. The village welcomed me with open arms and curious glances, its inhabitants a mixture of warmth and weariness. I settled into a small cottage at the edge of the village, its windows overlooking the churning sea, a constant companion in my quest for peace. But peace, I soon discovered, was a rare commodity in Yildor. The rain, ever-present, seemed to carry with it voices from the past, whispers that floated on the wind, telling tales of sorrow, love, and betrayal. The villagers spoke of the rain as if it were alive, a keeper of the village's secrets, a guardian of its history. My curiosity peaked, I began to explore, my wanderings taking me through winding streets and along the rugged coastline, each step revealing more of Yildor's hidden beauty and buried secrets. It was on one such exploration, deep in the heart of the village, that I stumbled upon an old bookshop, its shelves laden with dusty tomes and forgotten stories. The shopkeeper, an elderly man with eyes that seemed to see right through me, greeted me with a nod, a silent invitation to browse the treasures contained within. Drawn to a section of local history, I found a book whose pages told the story of Yildor's founding, of a time when the village was nothing more than a handful of cottages huddled against the stormy sea. As I delved deeper into Yildor's past, I learned of a legend, a tale of a shipwreck off the coast, of a survivor who brought with him a curse, a darkness that had since lingered over the village. The legend spoke of nights when the rain fell black, when shadows danced on the streets and the voices of the drowned could be heard in the wind. Skeptical yet fascinated, I questioned the shopkeeper about the legend, expecting a laugh, 
a dismissal of what I assumed was nothing more than a tale to scare children. But the look in his eyes, a mix of fear and resignation, told me there was more to the story, a truth that the villagers had learned to live with, a secret kept by the rain. Determined to uncover the truth, I waited for a night when the rain turned black, as the legend foretold. It wasn't long before the skies darkened, a storm brewing on the horizon, the air heavy with anticipation. As night fell, the rain began to fall, not the clear, cleansing rain I had known, but a torrent of black droplets, as if the sky itself mourned. Armed with a lantern and driven by a need to witness the truth firsthand, I ventured out into the storm. The streets of Yildor, usually so quiet and serene, were transformed, the black rain casting everything in a sinister hue, the shadows seeming to move with a life of their own. The voices, when they came, were almost drowned out by the rain, a chorus of whispers that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere. They spoke of lives cut short, of a darkness that had claimed the village as its own. I followed the voices, drawn to the shore where the waves crashed with relentless fury. There among the foam and spray, I saw them figures cloaked in mist, reenacting the moment of their demise, a ghostly shipwreck played out on the shores of Yildor. The sight was both terrifying and mesmerizing, a window into the past, a reminder of the price the village had paid for its survival. As dawn broke, the storm abated, the black rain giving way to clear skies, the shadows and voices fading with the light. The village of Yildor, once again wrapped in silence, held its secrets close, the truth of the legend now etched in my mind. I left Yildor not long after, the peace I had sought replaced by a profound respect for the village and its history. The rain, once a mere backdrop to my escape, had become a storyteller, a keeper of memories, a guardian of the thin line between the living and the dead. The stories of Yildor, like the rain, are endless, each drop a tale waiting to be told, a secret waiting to be uncovered. And as I look back on my time in the village, I realize that some places, some stories, are not meant to be understood, but merely experienced, a reminder of the mysteries that surround us, hidden in the heart of the rain. In the quiet aftermath of my departure from Yildor, the echoes of its whispered legends lingered with me, a haunting refrain that underscored the journey back to my urban life. The village, with its cobblestone paths and the spectral dance of figures beneath the black rain, had imprinted itself upon my soul, a stark reminder of the world's hidden depths and mysteries. As the distance from Yildor grew, so too did my realization that the experience had irreversibly altered my perception. The rain, once a simple act of nature, now carried with it the weight of untold stories and unsolved mysteries, each drop a potential echo from the past reaching out to the present. The thought was both exhilarating and daunting, a testament to the power of unexplained phenomena to challenge our understanding of reality. In the silence that followed the storm, I found myself pondering the delicate balance between belief and skepticism, between the seen and the unseen. The legends of Yildor, while fantastical, had revealed a truth often overlooked that the world is far more complex and mysterious than we dare to admit, and that sometimes the answers we seek are not meant to be found but felt, in the whispers of the rain and the shadows of our past. This realization, born from the heart of Yildor's storm, became a beacon, guiding me through the noise and chaos of my return to city life, a solitary light in the darkness reminding me of the endless mysteries waiting just beyond the veil of the ordinary. Story 17 The notion of returning to my hometown had always been a distant thought, a possibility shrouded in the mists of time and memory. Yet, as the train cut through the countryside, its wheels a steady rhythm against the tracks, the reality of my journey began to take shape. The city I had called home for the past decade had slowly lost its charm, the endless hustle and vibrant chaos giving way to a longing for simpler times, for the quiet streets and open spaces of my youth. Arriving under the cover of night, the town seemed to slumber peacefully, its familiar contours softened by the gentle fall of rain. The streets, once the stage for childhood adventures, now lay empty, a canvas painted with a soft glow of streetlights reflecting off wet asphalt. The rain, a constant companion in my childhood, welcomed me back, its gentle patter a soothing melody amidst the silence. My destination was the old house at the end of Maple Street, a structure that had stood the test of time, 
bearing witness to generations of laughter and sorrow. It was here, in this house, that my story began, and to which I now returned, seeking something I couldn't quite name. The house, much like the town, had changed little on the surface, its facade a familiar greeting. Yet, as I stepped inside, the weight of years spent away hung heavily in the air, the once vibrant halls now echoing with the quietude of abandonment. The rain outside seemed to intensify, its rhythm a counterpoint to my racing heart as I navigated through rooms filled with shadows and memories. It was in the attic, amidst the relics of a lifelong past, that I found it a box of old letters and photographs, remnants of a past I had all but forgotten. Each letter, each image, was a window into a time of innocence and wonder, of days spent playing in the rain, of nights listening to the stories of elders, tales of the town and its people, of mysteries whispered on the wind. Among these memories, a series of letters caught my attention, their contents hinting at a story untold, a mystery woven into the very fabric of the town. The letters, penned by my great-grandfather, spoke of a hidden place, a secret garden lost to time, rumored to lie within the heart of the forest that bordered the town. This garden, according to legend, was a place of beauty and magic, where time stood still, and the worries of the world faded into the mist. Driven by a newfound purpose, I resolved to uncover the truth behind the legend, to find the secret garden and witness its wonders for myself. The rain, ever-present, seemed to urge me on, a guiding force leading me deeper into the forest, its whispers hidden among the rustling leaves and the soft tread of my steps on the damp earth. The journey was not without its challenges, the forest a labyrinth of shadows and secrets, its paths winding and elusive. Yet with each step I felt myself drawn closer to my goal, as if the garden itself was calling out, its voice carried on the breeze. After what seemed like hours, the forest gave way to a clearing, and there, bathed in the soft light of the moon, lay the secret garden. It was more beautiful than I could have imagined, a haven untouched by time, its flowers and trees thriving in the eternal twilight. The air was filled with the scent of blossoms and the sound of a stream, its waters clear and bright, weaving through the garden like a ribbon of light. The secret garden was a place of peace, a sanctuary from the world beyond the forest. As I wandered its paths, I felt a sense of belonging, a connection to the land and its history, a reminder of the beauty that exists in the hidden corners of the world, waiting to be discovered. Yet, as the dawn approached, and the first rays of sunlight began to pierce the canopy, I knew that my time in the garden was coming to an end. With a heavy heart, I bid farewell to this magical place, its memory etched into my soul, a treasure to be carried with me as I made my way back to the world beyond the forest. The secret garden, like the rain that had led me to it, was a reminder of the wonders that lie in wait, of the mysteries that surround us, hidden in plain sight, awaiting those who seek them out. And as I emerged from the forest, the sun breaking through the clouds, I knew that my journey had only just begun, a quest to uncover the magic that exists within the world, within ourselves, a journey guided by the whispers of the rain. Reflecting on the journey back from the secret garden, the sun's gentle ascent seemed to paint the world anew, casting light on the beauty that resides in the hidden depths of our existence. The garden, with its timeless serenity, had imparted a profound sense of peace and understanding, a realization that beneath the veneer of everyday life lies a tapestry of stories and wonders waiting to be discovered. As I walked through the awakening streets of my hometown, the experiences of the night transformed my perception of the rain from a mere weather phenomenon to a narrative force capable of guiding lost souls to the discoveries meant to awaken their true purpose. The rain, in its myriad forms, had become a symbol of life's cyclical nature of endings and beginnings, of loss and rediscovery. Returning to the old house, the garden's memory of fresh imprint on my heart, I felt a renewed connection to my roots, to the stories and legends that had shaped the town and its people. The realization dawned on me that my journey was not just a quest for solitude but a search for connection, for the threads that weave the tapestry of our lives into a coherent whole. The letters from my great-grandfather, once cryptic and elusive, now read as a map to the heart, guiding me to the realization that the magic we seek is not found in distant lands or hidden gardens but in the connections we forge with the world around us. 
The secret garden, with its eternal beauty, was but one piece of the puzzle, a reminder of the wonders that lie in wait for those brave enough to seek them out. Story 18 The envelope was as unexpected as it was intriguing, arriving on a day when the rain seemed to echo the turmoil in my heart. It bore no return address, only my name, written in a hand I couldn't quite place. Inside was a letter and a key, the letter penned with a sense of urgency that belied its brief message come to the old mill by the river. All will be revealed. Tonight. The old mill had stood abandoned for as long as I could remember, its silhouette a constant against the changing seasons, a monument to a time when the town thrived on the river's bounty. Curiosity, coupled with a sense of foreboding, propelled me to answer the call. The rain a steady companion as I made my way through the deserted streets, the key a heavy presence in my pocket. As the mill came into view, its windows dark, the river's roar a backdrop to my apprehensive footsteps, I couldn't help but feel as though I was stepping into another world, one that lay hidden beneath the surface of my mundane existence. The key turned in the lock with a click that echoed in the empty space, the door swinging open to reveal the mill's secrets. What I found inside was a world apart from the decaying exterior, a studio bathed in the warm glow of lamplight, its walls adorned with paintings that captured the essence of the town and its people, each brushstroke a testament to a life spent observing the world from the shadows. In the center of the room stood an easel, a canvas awaiting the final touches, the scene it depicted one that took my breath away. The painting was of the secret garden, its beauty rendered with a precision and depth that spoke of first-hand knowledge, of nights spent under the moon's watchful eye. But how? The garden was my secret, a place I had stumbled upon by chance, its location known only to me. As I pondered the mystery, a figure emerged from the shadows, their presence a piece of the puzzle I hadn't known was missing. You found it, they said, their voice a mix of relief and sadness. The garden was never meant to be kept a secret, not truly. It was meant to be shared, to remind us of the beauty that exists in the world, if only we're willing to seek it out. The artist, as they revealed themselves to be, was a guardian of sorts, a keeper of the town's hidden wonders, their work a bridge between the seen and the unseen, the known and the unknown. They spoke of the garden as a living entity, its magic derived from its connection to the people and the land, a connection that had been severed by time and neglect. The key, they explained, was a symbol, an invitation to reconnect with the world's hidden wonders, to become a guardian in my own right. The letter, a call to action, to step out of the shadows and into the light, to share the beauty of the secret garden and the stories it held with the world. As the night gave way to dawn, and the rain ceased its melancholy song, I understood that my journey had been leading me to this moment, to the realization that our lives are interwoven with the mysteries and wonders of the world, that each of us has a key, yeah, a role to play in uncovering and sharing the magic that lies waiting in the heart of the rain. With the dawn breaking, casting a new light on the old mill and the secrets it held, I stood at a crossroads of my own making the key in my hand, not just a literal artifact, but a metaphor for the choices that lay before me. The artist's revelation, that the magic of the secret garden was meant to be shared, not hoarded, sparked a transformation within me, a shift from observer to participant in the unfolding story of our town. As I left the mill, the key's weight felt different, as if its metal held not just the power to unlock doors, but to open pathways to new understandings and connections. The town, awakening under the gentle caress of the morning sun, seemed to beckon with new possibilities, its familiar streets now roads to myriad adventures, and stories waiting to be discovered and told. This encounter, in the heart of a night wrapped in mystery and rain, reminded me of the intricate tapestry of life, where every thread is interconnected, each of us a guardian of our own slice of magic, tasked with the stewardship of the wonders that bind us to each other and to the earth. It was a call to action to step into the light and share the beauty of the garden, to weave my thread into the fabric of the town's story, enriching it with the colors of mystery, magic, and connection. Story 19. The incessant tapping of the rain against the window pane mirrored the turmoil in my mind as I pondered the strange events of the previous night. The world outside was a blur of gray, the rain obscuring the lines between sky and earth, 
a perfect reflection of the confusion that clouded my thoughts. The artist's words lingered in the air, a challenge and an invitation to see beyond the mundane, to embrace the magic hidden in plain sight. Yet, as the day waned and the rain continued its relentless descent, a peculiar feeling of restlessness took hold, propelling me out into the wet streets, the key a constant presence in my pocket. My steps led me, as if by their own volition, to the edge of town, where the urban landscape gave way to the wild beauty of nature, a forest that skirted the town's boundaries, ancient and untamed. The forest, with its dense canopy and tangled underbrush, was a world apart from the structured life I had known. Its paths, winding and narrow, beckoned with the promise of secrets and stories untold. It was here, amidst the whispering trees and the soft, persistent drumming of the rain, that I stumbled upon an old, abandoned railway track, its rails consumed by rust, its ties smothered by the relentless embrace of nature. The sight of the railway, a relic of a bygone era, sparked a curiosity that pushed me further into the forest, following the track as it snaked through the trees, a silent guide through the heart of the wilderness. The rain, a constant companion, seemed to cleanse my vision, each drop a lens through which the world appeared sharper, more vibrant. As twilight approached, the forest's mysteries deepened, shadows dancing between the trees, the sounds of nature a symphony that spoke of life in its myriad forms. It was then, in the dim light of dusk that I saw at a train station, as out of place in the wilderness as a ship in the desert, its structure a testament to the indomitable will of those who had sought to tame the wild. The station, abandoned and overgrown, held a melancholic beauty, its once bustling platforms now silent, a memory of movement and life. Drawn by an inexplicable pull, I explored the station, finding within its walls echoes of laughter and farewell, the ghostly remnants of journeys begun and ended. In the station's heart I discovered a waiting room, its benches lined with the dust of decades, and on one of these benches a suitcase, as if left behind in haste, forgotten by its owner. The key in my pocket burned with sudden purpose, and to my astonishment, fit the suitcase's lock as if made for it. Inside the suitcase I found maps and documents, each piece a fragment of a larger puzzle that hinted at a secret project, a railway that had been meant to connect not just towns but worlds, a bridge between the known and the unknown. The realization that the forest, the railway, and the station were part of a grander design, a network of magic and mystery that transcended the physical boundaries of our world, was both astounding and daunting. As the night enveloped the forest, the rain easing its assault, I stood at the center of a narrative that spanned generations, a keeper of secrets that connected the past to the present, the mundane to the magical. The suitcase, the maps, the abandoned station, they were all pieces of a story that I was now a part of, a story that challenged me to look beyond the surface, to uncover the magic that lies waiting in the shadows, in the rain, in the heart of the forest. The journey back to the town was a reflection on the interconnectedness of all things, on the invisible threads that weave the tapestry of our existence. The rain, once a simple fact of nature, had become a symbol of the myriad mysteries that surround us, each drop a potential key to unlocking the wonders and secrets of the world. As I crossed the threshold back into the familiar streets of my hometown, the adventure in the forest of vivid memory, I knew that my life had been irrevocably changed. The rain, the forest, the abandoned railway station they had shown me that magic is real, that it exists in the spaces between, waiting for those with the courage to seek it out, to share its stories with the world. Story 20 The digital clock on my bedside table flickered to 3 a.m., the time glowing in a harsh blue light that seemed out of place in the darkness of my room. Outside, the rain had started again, its gentle patter a stark contrast to the turmoil brewing within me. Sleep had become a stranger in recent weeks, ever since the dreams began. Dreams that felt more like memories, fragments of a life I was sure I had never lived. They led me here, to the sleepy town of Renwood, nestled in the heart of the mountains, a place that, until recently I had no knowledge of. Yet, every corner, every shadow-filled alley, felt hauntingly familiar, 
as if I were retracing steps taken long ago. The rain seemed to acknowledge my return, its presence a constant as I wandered through the town, drawn by an unseen force to a destination unknown. My days were spent exploring Renwood, each step guided by the visceral pull of the dreams that haunted my nights. It was on one such exploration, beneath a relentless downpour, that I found the alley. Tucked away between two crumbling buildings, it was easy to miss, but to me it was as if a spotlight shone upon its entrance. The air here was different, charged with a static energy that raised the hairs on the back of my neck. Compelled by a mixture of fear and anticipation, I ventured deeper into the alley, the raindrops creating a symphony of sound around me. The further I went, the more the town of Renwood seemed to fade away, replaced by a silence so profound it was almost deafening. And then I saw at the door, old, wooden, and incongruous with its surroundings, it stood as if waiting just for me. The key I had found in my dreams, so vivid and tangible, now burned in my pocket, a weight that pulled me towards the door with an irresistible force. With a trembling hand, I inserted the key into the lock, the click of the mechanism breaking the silence like a gunshot. The door swung open, revealing not the back of the buildings, but a pathway shrouded in mist, a bridge between worlds. As I stepped through, the rain followed, its droplets transforming into something luminescent, lighting the path ahead. The alley in the town of Renwood fell away, and I found myself in a forest, ancient and alive, its trees towering above, their branches a canopy against the sky. The path wound deeper into the forest, leading me to a clearing where the rain pooled into a mirror-like lake, its surface smooth and undisturbed. By the lake stood a figure, ethereal and luminous, as if made of the rain itself. You have returned, they said, their voice a melody that resonated with my very soul. Renwood has awaited your return, guardian of the rain. Guardian of the Rain. The title echoed in my mind, a key unlocking memories long buried. The figure explained that Renwood existed on the boundary between worlds, a sanctuary for those who could navigate the spaces between. As Guardian, it was my duty to protect this threshold, to ensure the balance between the seen and unseen, the known and unknown. The realization of my purpose filled me with a sense of belonging I had never known. The dreams, the journey to Renwood, the alley, and the door, it had all been a path leading me to this moment, to my awakening as the Guardian. The figure before me was the previous Guardian, their time now at an end, their essence returning to the rain from which they were born. They imparted their knowledge to me, tales of Renwood's history, of the Guardians who had come before, each story woven into the fabric of the rain, a tapestry of duty and sacrifice. As they spoke, the rain around us began to swirl, a dance of light and water, a visual symphony that illustrated their words. My training began that night, under the watchful eyes of the stars and the gentle guidance of the rain. I learned to listen to the whispers of the water, to understand its secrets, to harness its power to protect the threshold. The rain was no longer just a phenomenon of nature, it was a source of magic, of life, of connection to the world around me. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, as I embraced my role as guardian, the town of Renwood becoming both my charge and my home. The people, unaware of the true nature of their town, lived their lives wrapped in the safety of the unknown, their guardian watching over them, a silent protector in the rain. But with great power came great responsibility. The balance between worlds was delicate, threatened by forces that sought to exploit the threshold for their own ends. It was during a storm, when the veil between worlds was thinnest, that the first challenge came, a darkness that crept through the rain, seeking entrance into our world. Armed with the knowledge and power of the Guardians, I faced the darkness, the rain my ally and the battle that ensued. It was a test of wills, a confrontation that pushed me to the limits of my abilities, but in the end, the balance was preserved, the threshold secured. As peace returned to Renwood, and the rain eased its assault. I stood by the lake, reflecting on the journey that had led me here. The Guardian of the Rain, a title I had once thought beyond my understanding, was now a part of who I was, a role I embraced with all my heart. The rain, with its infinite stories and secrets, 
was a constant reminder of the beauty and mystery that exists in the world, of the duty to protect and preserve the magic that lies hidden in the spaces between. Renwood, with its quaint streets and ancient forests, was more than just a town, it was a beacon of hope, a reminder that even in the darkest of storms, there is light to be found, if only we have the courage to seek it out. Story 21 the incessant drumming of the rain against my window served as a constant reminder of the world outside, a world I had once known but now seemed as distant as the stars overhead. My return to Eldridge, a town nestled at the edge of reality, was not by choice but by necessity, drawn back by a letter from an old friend I thought lost to time. Eldridge had changed, or perhaps it was I who had changed. The streets, once filled with the laughter of children and the bustling of daily life, now lay silent, shrouded in an omnipresent fog that seemed to swallow everything it touched. The letter, cryptic in its urgency, hinted at a discovery that could alter the fabric of our understanding, a secret buried deep within the heart of Eldridge. Armed with nothing but the letter and a sense of foreboding, I set out into the rain, each step taking me deeper into the mystery that had ensnared my friend. The town, familiar in its layout, felt alien, the landmarks of my youth obscured by the relentless weather and an unease that permeated the air. The library, a building that had once stood as a beacon of knowledge and community, was my destination. According to the letter, within its walls lay the key to the discovery, hidden amongst the tomes of forgotten lore and ancient manuscripts. The rain, unyielding in its assault, seemed to mock my efforts, a physical barrier between me and the truth that awaited. As I entered the library, the silence was overwhelming, the usual whisper of pages and soft footsteps replaced by a stillness that bordered on the unnatural. The building, once warm and inviting, now felt cold, its secrets locked behind a veil of time and neglect. My search led me to the archives, a labyrinth of shelves and boxes that held the history of Eldridge and its people. Hours turned into days as I pored over the documents, each piece of paper, each faded photograph, a puzzle piece in the grand tapestry of the town's hidden past. It was there, amongst the detritus of history, that I found it a journal, its pages yellowed with age, the handwriting a familiar scrawl that I recognized as my friends. The entry spoke of a place beyond the edges of Eldridge, a place where the rain fell not from the sky but upwards, defying the laws of nature and reason. This place, referred to simply as the Inversion, was the discovery that had consumed my friend, a phenomenon that challenged everything we thought we knew about the world. The journal detailed the experiments, the observations, and the theories that had led to the discovery of the inversion, a place where the boundary between our world and something else, something other, was thin. My friend believed that the inversion was a gateway, a door that could lead us to answers about the universe and our place within it. Determined to see this discovery for myself, I followed the directions laid out in the journal, each step taking me away from the familiar paths of Eldridge and into the unknown. The rain, a constant companion, seemed to guide me, its droplets a compass pointing towards the inversion. As I approached the location, the world around me began to change, the raindrops slowing in their descent, their movement becoming erratic until at last they began to rise. The sight was surreal, a visual anomaly that defied explanation, the rain ascending back to the heavens from which it came. Standing at the threshold of the inversion, I could feel the pull of the unknown, a force that beckoned me forward. Stepping into the anomaly, the world shifted, the laws of physics bending in ways that left my mind reeling. It was a place of beauty and terror, a glimpse into the vast unknown that lay beyond our understanding. Within the inversion, time and space seemed fluid, the landscape a shifting mosaic of realities that overlapped and intertwined. I saw visions of other worlds, of possibilities that stretched the boundaries of imagination, each more wondrous and terrifying than the last. But it was the presence within the inversion that left the most lasting impression, a consciousness that pervaded the anomaly, ancient and vast. It spoke not in words but in feelings, a communication that transcended language, imparting knowledge of the universe, of the interconnectedness of all things of the thin veil that separates our reality from the infinite others that exist alongside it. The journey through the inversion was both a revelation and a warning, a glimpse into the potential of the universe and the dangers that come with meddling in forces beyond our control. My friend's discovery, 
While groundbreaking had opened a door that perhaps should have remained closed, a Pandora's box of cosmic proportions. Returning to Eldridge, the experience of the inversion a heavy burden, I understood the urgency of the letter, the need to share this discovery, and yet the fear of what it could mean for humanity. The rain, once a simple meteorological phenomenon, now held a deeper significance, a reminder of the mysteries that lie just beyond our grasp, waiting to be uncovered. The story of Eldridge and the inversion became a testament to the pursuit of knowledge, to the human spirit's unyielding desire to understand the universe and our place within it. It was a reminder that, within the rain, within the very fabric of reality, there lies a magic and a mystery that binds us all, a cosmic dance of life, death, and the infinite possibilities that lie between. Story 22 In the small town of Marrow's End, rain had become a constant companion, its ceaseless patter a soundtrack to the lives of those who called this place home. The town, with its cobblestone streets and antiquated buildings, seemed untouched by time, a relic of the past holding on to its secrets with a stubborn resilience. I arrived in Marrow's End under the veil of night, the rain my only greeting as I stepped off the train onto the deserted platform. My arrival was driven by a letter, a plea for help from an old friend, Daniel, whose words were etched with a desperation that I could not ignore. Daniel spoke of strange occurrences, of shadows that moved with a life of their own, and of whispers in the rain that spoke of things best left forgotten. The town was as I remembered, yet everything seemed amplified under the cover of the storm, each shadow deeper, each silence louder. As I made my way to Daniel's home, the sense of unease grew, the feeling of being watched almost palpable. The streets were empty, the only sound the steady rhythm of the rain and the echo of my footsteps on the wet cobblestone. Daniel's home, a Victorian relic at the edge of town, stood as a testament to Marrow's End's history, its facade a mask of respectability that barely concealed the decay within. The door creaked open at my touch, the interior engulfed in darkness, save for the faint glow of a candle that flickered in the distance. Daniel, I called out, my voice swallowed by the shadows. No answer came, only the sound of the rain, a constant reminder of the storm's unyielding presence. I found him in the study, a figure hunched over scattered papers, his hands trembling as he pored over ancient texts and cryptic notes. The room was a chaos of obsession, each piece of paper a fragment of the puzzle that had consumed him. Daniel, what is this? I asked, my concern mounting as I took in the scene before me. He looked up, his eyes haunted, shadows of fear lurking within their depths. It's the rain, he whispered, his voice a mix of fear and fascination. There's something in the rain, something ancient, something wrong. His words were a riddle, a mystery wrapped in the enigma of the downpour that had become a permanent fixture of our lives. The documents scattered across the table spoke of legends and lore, of a curse that had befallen Marrow's End centuries ago, a curse that had brought with it a rain that never ceased, a rain that whispered secrets meant only for the damned. As the night deepened, Daniel shared his findings, tales of a town cursed by its past, of a darkness that had seeped into the very fabric of Marrow's End, carried on the droplets of an endless rain. He spoke of his research, of his attempts to uncover the truth behind the curse, to find a way to break the cycle that had trapped the town in a perpetual state of twilight. The more I listened, the more I realized that Daniel's obsession had led him to the brink of madness, his mind a labyrinth of theories and conjectures that left little room for reason. Yet, amidst the chaos of his thoughts, a pattern began to emerge, a thread that, if followed, could lead us to the heart of the mystery. Together we delved deeper into the lore of Marrow's End, our search taking us to forgotten corners of the town, to ancient graveyards where the rain seemed to speak the names of those long past, to derelict buildings where shadows moved with purpose, and to the very edge of the forest that bordered the town, where the rain fell with a ferocity that seemed almost hungry. Our journey was one of discovery and horror as we uncovered the truth of the curse, a tale of betrayal and vengeance that had doomed Marrow's end to its watery fate. A pact made with dark forces, a sacrifice gone awry, had unleashed a malevolence upon the town, a darkness that fed on the fears of its inhabitants, growing stronger with each drop of rain. The solution, we found, 
lay in confronting the past, in facing the darkness with a light born of understanding and forgiveness. It was a perilous path fraught with danger, as the entity that had claimed Marrow's End as its own was not easily swayed. The final confrontation, beneath the canopy of the storm, was a battle of wills, a test of our resolve against the ancient hatred that had cursed the town. In the end, it was the rain itself that proved to be our salvation, its waters a conduit for the energy we needed to break the cycle. As the curse lifted, the rain eased, its whispers fading into silence, the shadows retreating into the light of a new dawn. Marrow's end was free, the curse broken, but the cost had been high. Daniel, forever changed by the ordeal, chose to leave the town, seeking solace in the anonymity of the city. I remained, drawn to the mysteries that still lurked in the corners of the world, the shadows that danced just beyond the reach of the light. The rain, once a harbinger of doom, now fell with a gentle touch, a reminder of the darkness we had overcome and the light we had found in the heart of the storm. Marrow's End, reborn from the depths of its past, stood as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, to our ability to confront our fears and emerge victorious. And so the story of Marrow's End became a legend, a tale told beneath the eaves during stormy nights, a narrative of darkness and light, of rain and redemption. It was a reminder that within each of us lies the power to face the shadows, to challenge the curses that bind us, and to find our way back to the light. Story 23 In the village of Thornwood, nestled within a valley shrouded in mist and secrets, the rain served as both a blessing and a curse. It nourished the land, yes, but it also brought with it whispers of the past, echoes of a time when the village was caught in the grip of an unfathomable darkness. Eli, a writer in search of solitude and inspiration, arrived in Thornwood one autumn evening, his arrival marked by the onset of the season's first rain. The quaintness of the village, with its cobblestone streets and ivy-draped cottages, promised a peaceful retreat from the chaos of the city. Yet from the moment he crossed the threshold into Thornwood, Eli felt the weight of unseen eyes upon him, a sense of history that lingered in the air like a forgotten melody. His rented cottage, a stone's throw from the heart of the village, was a relic of days gone by, its walls steeped in stories waiting to be told. It was here, amidst the pattering of rain against aged glass, that Eli began to write, his pen moving as if guided by a force beyond his understanding. Days melded into nights, the rain a constant companion in Eli's journey of creation. Yet, as his story unfolded, so too did the mysteries of Thornwood, the rain whispering secrets of a long-forgotten curse that had once plunged the village into despair. Eli's curiosity once piqued became an obsession, the lines between his story and the village's history blurring until they were indistinguishable. Determined to uncover the truth, Eli ventured deeper into Thornwood's past, his inquiries leading him to the village archives, a treasure trove of documents, letters and diaries that chronicled the village's tumultuous history. It was there, among the dust-covered tomes, that he discovered the tale of the Ashen Heart, a mysterious relic said to possess the power to bring ruin or redemption to Thornwood. Legend had it that the Ashen Heart was sealed away deep within the forest that bordered the village, its location lost to time, guarded by the spirits of the forest entities as ancient as the land itself. The relic, imbued with an arcane power, was both feared and revered, a symbol of the village's resilience in the face of darkness. The forest, with its gnarled trees and veiled paths, called to Eli, its secrets a siren song he could not ignore. Armed with nothing but his resolve and the clues unearthed in the archives, he set out into the heart of the woodland, the rain his silent guardian as he treaded paths untrodden for generations. What Eli found within the depths of the forest challenged the very fabric of his reality. The ashen heart, a jewel of crystalline darkness, pulsed with an otherworldly energy, its surface a tapestry of swirling shadows. The spirits of the forest, ethereal beings of light and mist, whispered of the relic's origin, of a time when the boundary between worlds was thin and magic flowed as freely as the waters of Thornwood's streams. The Ashen Heart, they revealed, was not a tool of destruction, but a beacon of hope, a key to healing the rifts that had torn through the village and the land beyond. Its power, however, was not to be wielded lightly, 
for with great power came great responsibility, a balance that must be maintained lest disaster befall the wielder and the world around them. Eli, understanding the gravity of his discovery, knew that the Ashen Heart's destiny was intertwined with his own, that his arrival in Thornwood was no coincidence. With the guidance of the forest spirits, he undertook the task of restoring the relic to its rightful place, a sanctuary deep within the forest where its power could be safeguarded and used for the benefit of all. The journey back to the village, the Ashen Heart in tow, was a test of Eli's will, the relic's power a beacon that attracted forces of darkness, remnants of the curse that had once plagued Thornwood. Yet with the spirits by his side, Eli overcame each obstacle, his resolve strengthened by the knowledge that he was not alone, that the village, the forest, and the spirits stood with him. As the Ashen Heart was restored to its sanctuary, the rain ceased, the clouds parting to reveal a sky of brilliant blue, a sign that the curse was lifted, and Thornwood's future was once again filled with hope. The village, its people unaware of the role Eli had played in their salvation, welcomed the change with open arms, the air filled with laughter and light once more. Eli, his task complete, found that Thornwood had become more than just a retreat, it had become a home, a place where his story had become a part of the village's larger narrative. The cottage, once a temporary haven, now stood as a testament to his journey, a reminder of the power of stories to change the world, one word, one raindrop at a time. As he resumed his writing, Eli realized that the story he had come to Thornwood to write had already unfolded around him, a tale of mystery, magic, and transformation. And in the heart of the forest, the ashen heart pulsed with a gentle light, a beacon of hope for all who dared to dream, to explore, and to believe in the magic that lies just beyond the veil of the sea. Story 24 In the heart of the sprawling city of Veritas, amidst the cacophony of urban life, there existed a peculiar bookstore known to few, its existence barely noted by the bustling crowd, whispers between pages. It was called A Haven for the Lost, the curious, and those who believed in the magic that words could wield. Jasper, a young man with a restless spirit and a thirst for something beyond the ordinary, stumbled upon the bookstore one rainy evening, when the streets of Veritas were shrouded in mist, the rain painting the world in hues of gray and blue. The moment he crossed the threshold, he felt a shift, as if stepping into another realm where time flowed differently, and stories had the power to change the very essence of reality. The interior was a labyrinth of shelves, each book a portal to another world, guarded by the enigmatic owner, M.S. Lorian, a woman whose age was as much a mystery as the origins of the bookstore itself. She welcomed Jasper with a knowing smile, as if she had been expecting him, and without a word she handed him a book, its cover worn and its pages yellowed with time. The book, titled The Heart of Veritas, spoke of an ancient legend, a tale of a hidden heart that pulsed beneath the city a source of magic that connected every soul within its borders. According to the legend, the heart had been lost, its power fading as the city grew, and the belief in magic waned, replaced by the cold logic of technology in progress. Driven by a desire to uncover the truth behind the legend, Jasper embarked on a journey through the heart of Veritas, guided by the tales woven within the pages of the book. His quest led him to hidden corners of the city, to places where the veil between the mundane and the magical was thin, and to encounters with individuals who had been touched by the heart's power. As Jasper delved deeper into the mystery, he began to see Veritas in a new light, to understand that magic existed not in grand gestures or ancient relics, but in the connections between people, in the stories they shared, and in the moments of wonder that could be found in the everyday. The search for the heart became a journey of self-discovery, a realization that the magic he sought was within him, a part of the tapestry of life that connected him to the city and its inhabitants. With each person he helped, each story he shared, Jasper felt the pulse of the heart of Veritas grow stronger, its magic flowing through the streets like a river of light, dispelling the shadows of doubt and despair. In the end, Jasper understood that the heart of Veritas was not a physical treasure to be unearthed but a metaphor for the collective spirit of the city a manifestation of the love, hope, and dreams of its people. 
and in that realization he found his purpose, to be a keeper of the heart, a guardian of the magic that bound the city and its people together. Whispers Between Pages became his sanctuary, a place where stories were not just read but lived, where every book held the promise of adventure, and every visitor left with a piece of the heart of Veritas. Jasper's journey from a seeker of magic to a guardian of stories became a legend in its own right, a reminder that within every heart lies the power to change the world, one story at a time. As Jasper's legend grew within the cobblestone streets of Veritas, whispers between pages transformed from a hidden gem into a beacon for those seeking the extraordinary in the midst of their ordinary lives. The bookstore, under Jasper's stewardship, began to host gatherings where the citizens of Veritas shared their stories, each tale a thread in the vibrant tapestry of the city's collective soul. The magic of the bookstore and the legend of the heart of Veritas inspired a renaissance of wonder in the city. Murals depicting scenes from ancient legends and tales of modern heroism began to adorn the once drab walls of buildings, infusing the city with color and life. Street performers, inspired by the stories of whispers between pages filled the air with music and poetry, creating a symphony of creativity that echoed through the streets. Jasper, with each day spent in the bookstore, realized that the heart of Veritas throbbed strongest in the quiet moments of connection when a child discovered the joy of reading, when an old man recounted tales of Veritas's past, and when strangers found common ground and shared stories. It was in these moments that the city's heart beat loudest, a rhythm fueled by the collective hopes, dreams, and memories of its people. The quest for the heart had led Jasper to understand that magic was not just a force to be wielded, but a living, breathing essence that thrived on connection and understanding. He saw that his role was not to guard a relic of power, but to nurture the spirit of wonder and belief in the impossible, ensuring that it would never fade from the hearts of Veritas's people. Whispers Between Pages stood as a testament to the enduring power of stories, a reminder that even in a world where technology and progress threatened to overshadow the mystical, there remained a place for magic, woven into the fabric of daily life. Jasper's journey had come full circle, from a seeker of forgotten magic to a guardian of wonder, proving that the true heart of Veritas was, and always would be, the stories we share and the connections we forge. Story 25 Under the veil of twilight in the sprawling metropolis of Avalon, a city that thrived on innovation and the promise of tomorrow, there existed a peculiar anomaly that defied the very essence of time and space. Known only to a select few, this anomaly lay hidden within the heart of the city's oldest park, a place where nature reclaimed what was once hers, a sanctuary from the relentless march of progress. Evelyn, a young scientist with a passion for quantum physics and a skeptical mind, stumbled upon this anomaly by chance. Her curiosity, kindled by tales of unexplained phenomena that whispered through the corridors of the university, drove her to explore the park under the cloak of night, armed with nothing but her wits and a handheld device she had created to detect fluctuations in the fabric of reality. As she navigated through the labyrinth of ancient trees and overgrown paths, her device began to hum with activity, its lights flickering in a frenzied dance. The air around her charged with electricity, the boundary between the seen and the unseen growing thin. And then she found it a rift, a tear in the veil that separated her world from what lay beyond. The rift pulsed with a light that was neither wholly natural nor entirely artificial, a beacon in the shadowed grove. Evelyn, her heart racing with a mixture of fear and exhilaration, approached the rift, her device now silent, as if in reverence of the power it beheld. Drawing on every ounce of courage, Evelyn stepped through the rift, her body enveloped in a brilliance that blinded her senses. When her vision cleared, she found herself standing in the heart of Avalon, but not the Avalon she knew. This was a city untouched by time, a vision of the past that she had only seen in photographs and read about in history books. The people, dressed in the fashions of a bygone era, moved about their lives, oblivious to the anomaly that had delivered Evelyn to their midst. As she navigated through the streets, a realization dawned upon her the rift had transported her not through space, but through time. Determined to understand the nature of the rift and, perhaps, find a way back to her own time, Evelyn began to explore this version of Avalon, her scientific mind cataloging every detail, 
every anomaly that could provide a clue to the workings of the rift. Her journey led her to the library, a grand edifice that stood as a testament to the city's reverence for knowledge. There, amidst the dusty tomes and ancient manuscripts, Evelyn discovered the tale of the rift, known in legend as the Tear of Kronos. A portal through which the boundaries of time could be traversed, created by a device whose origins were as mysterious as its disappearance. The device, according to legend, was the creation of a scientist whose name had been lost to time, a person who, like Evelyn, sought to unravel the mysteries of the universe. But with the power of the device came a great responsibility, for the fabric of time was delicate, easily torn but difficult to mend. Fueled by a determination to return to her own time and perhaps prevent the misuse of such power, Evelyn embarked on a quest to find the device, her journey taking her to the heart of the city's power, where the lines between ally and adversary blurred, and the stakes were higher than she could have ever imagined. As she delved deeper into the mystery of the Tear of Kronos, Evelyn forged alliances with figures from the past, their own stories intertwined with the fate of the device. Together they faced challenges that tested their courage, their resolve, and their understanding of the very fabric of reality. The quest for the device revealed truths that shook Evelyn to her core, truths about her own lineage, about the scientist who created the device, and about the role she was destined to play in the saga of the Tear of Kronos. With the device finally within her grasp, Evelyn was faced with a choice return to her own time and seal the rift, or use its power to change the course of history, for better or worse. Her decision, made in the shadow of the rift, would echo through the annals of time, a testament to the enduring quest for knowledge and the indomitable human spirit. As Evelyn stepped through the rift once more, the city of Avalon, both past and present, watched as a new chapter in its history was written, a story of adventure, discovery, and the timeless bond that connects us all across the vast expanse of time. Story 26 in the shadow of the towering cityscape of New Corinth, amidst the ceaseless hum of progress and the relentless pursuit of the future, there thrived a clandestine society known only to those who dared to dream beyond the boundaries of the known. This society, the Order of the Hidden, had long safeguarded secrets that questioned the very foundation of reality as perceived by the common eye. Amidst this backdrop, a young coder named Adrian found himself grappling with a truth that unraveled the fabric of his existence. His journey began with a series of cryptic messages left in the code of an ancient program he was tasked to decrypt for the tech giant Helix Dynamics, where innovation wasn't just the goal but the mandate. Each line of code whispered secrets of a world that lay hidden beneath the veneer of everyday life, a realm where magic and technology intertwined in an intricate dance. The messages led Adrian to the Order of the Hidden, custodians of knowledge so profound that it threatened to dismantle the very pillars of modern civilization. Guided by a mysterious figure known only as Orion, Adrian embarked on a quest that took him deep into the underbelly of New Corinth. Here, in the forgotten spaces where the city's heart beat strongest, he discovered the existence of Arcanum Core's objects of immense power born from the union of ancient alchemy and cutting-edge science. The Arcanum Cores, as Orion revealed, were the keys to unlocking dimensions beyond Adrian's wildest imaginations, realms where the laws of physics bowed to the will of those who wielded the cores. But such power came with a price. A shadowy faction within Helix Dynamics, led by the enigmatic CEO Cassandra Vale, sought to harness the cores for their own nefarious purposes, to control not just the markets of the world, but its very reality. Adrian's journey transformed him from a mere spectator of the extraordinary into a pivotal player in a battle that spanned across dimensions. Alongside Orion and a band of allies drawn from the ranks of the Order, including a rogue scientist, a disillusioned magician, and a renegade AI, Adrian fought to protect the Arcanum cores from those who would misuse them. As the struggle for control of the cores escalated, Adrian discovered within himself abilities that defied explanation abilities awakened by his interaction with the cores, marking him as a catalyst, one of the rare beings capable of bridging the worlds of magic and machine. The climax of their conflict took place in the heart of Helix Dynamics, within the labyrinth of its quantum computing facility, where the final core lay hidden. It was here, 
Amidst the pulsing of quantum processors that Adrian and his allies confronted Cassandra Vale and her legion, the fate of multiple realities hanging in the balance. The battle was fierce, a maelstrom of magic and technology that pushed Adrian to the limits of his newfound abilities. In the end, it was not just the strength of their arms or the power of the cores that turned the tide, but the unyielding spirit of belief, a belief, a belief in a world where magic and technology could coexist in harmony, enriching each other. With the Arcanum cores secured and the immediate threat neutralized, Adrian stood at the dawn of a new era for New Corinth. The Order of the Hidden emerged from the shadows, their knowledge and wisdom no longer a secret, but a beacon for those who sought to understand the true nature of their world. Adrian, forever changed by his journey, became a bridge between the worlds of science and magic, his life a testament to the idea that the pursuit of knowledge knows no bounds, that the mysteries of the universe are not to be feared but embraced. Whispers of the Arcanum as his story came to be known, inspired a generation to look beyond the confines of their reality, to question the nature of existence, and to explore the infinite possibilities that lay at the intersection of the known and the unknown. And so, the city of New Corinth, once a symbol of relentless progress, became a nexus of magic and technology, a place where the future was not just built but discovered, where the journey of one became the journey of many, poor united in their quest for the hidden truths that lay waiting in the fabric of the cosmos. Story 27 In the secluded town of Greyhaven, nestled between whispering forests and undulating hills, there existed a legend as old as the town itself. It was said that every century the celestial alignment would occur a rare event where all seven moons of the realm aligned perfectly, opening a portal to the ethereal plane, a realm of infinite knowledge and power. Liam, an aspiring writer with an insatiable curiosity, had returned to Greyhaven to care for his ailing grandfather, the town's historian and keeper of countless tales. Among the dusty tomes and ancient artifacts in his grandfather's study, Liam discovered a journal detailing the last celestial alignment and the mysterious ethereal plane. His grandfather, once a vibrant man of adventure, had been part of the last expedition to seek the portal but had returned alone, forever changed. The journal spoke of unimaginable wonders and unspeakable horrors, of a journey that tested the limits of the human spirit. Liam, moved by his grandfather's accounts and driven by his own thirst for adventure, decided to embark on a quest to witness the celestial alignment and uncover the truths hidden within the ethereal plane. Armed with the journal and a pendant passed down through generations the key to unlocking the portal Liam gathered a group of friends, each with their own reasons for joining the quest. Among them were Maya, a gifted mage seeking knowledge to save her dying homeland Ethan, a rogue with a shadowy past and unparalleled skills in navigation and Zoe, a scholar obsessed with the mysteries of the ancient world. As the day of the celestial alignment approached, the group ventured into the heart of the forest, following ancient markers laid out in the journal. The journey was fraught with challenges, from treacherous terrain and supernatural creatures guarding the path to internal conflicts and the weight of their own fears and desires. On the night of the alignment, under the glow of the seven moons, the group reached the clearing described in the journal. The air hummed with energy, the pendant glowing with an ethereal light, as the portal slowly materialized before their eyes a gateway shimmering with the promise of untold knowledge and power. Stepping through the portal, the group found themselves in the ethereal plane, a realm beyond the bounds of imagination. Time and space held no dominion here the landscape shifted with their thoughts and desires, revealing wonders that filled them with awe and terrors that tested their resolve. The group encountered beings of pure energy, ancient guardians of the ethereal plane, who challenged their intentions and forced them to confront their deepest fears and desires. Each trial was a lesson, revealing truths about themselves and the nature of the universe that bound them together. As they journeyed deeper into the ethereal plane, the line between reality and illusion blurred, and Liam began to understand the true purpose of their quest not just the pursuit of knowledge, but, but the discovery of their own inner strength and the unbreakable bonds of friendship and love that united them. In the heart of the ethereal plane, they found the source of the realm's power of crystal of pure aether, pulsating with the essence of creation and destruction. 
The Guardians offer them a choice to take the crystal and return to their world with the power to shape reality, or leave it and preserve the balance between the planes. The decision weighed heavily on them, each aware of the consequences their choice could bring. In the end, inspired by his grandfather's journal and the lessons learned on their journey, Liam chose to leave the crystal, realizing that true power lay not in the ability to control the world, but in the wisdom to nurture and protect it. Returning to Grey Haven, the group found the town asleep, unaware of the epic journey that had unfolded. Liam and his friends, forever changed by their adventure, dedicated themselves to safeguarding the knowledge and experiences they had gained, guiding the next generation to appreciate the mysteries of the universe and the power of the human spirit to overcome any challenge. Liam continued to write, his stories now imbued with the truths of the ethereal plane, serving as a beacon for those who dared to dream and seek the wonders of the world beyond. The legend of their quest became a part of Grey Heaven's history, a reminder that beyond the veil of the known lies a realm of infinite possibilities, waiting for the brave to explore. Story 28 In a world not unlike our own, where the boundary between the digital and the physical had blurred into obscurity, there existed the nexus of digital realm that connected every mind on the planet, a manifestation of human consciousness and technology intertwined. Within this realm, memories, thoughts, and dreams coalesced, forming a landscape as varied and vast as the physical world. Caleb, a young programmer with a penchant for exploring the uncharted territories of the nexus, stumbled upon an anomaly, a digital echo that hinted at the existence of a hidden dimension within the nexus, a place where the foundational code of reality itself could be accessed and altered. Driven by a mix of curiosity and a desire to escape the mundanity of his existence, Caleb embarked on a journey to uncover the secrets of this hidden dimension. His only guide was an ancient piece of code, rumored to be the first line ever written for the Nexus, a key that could unlock the pathways to the deepest layers of the digital realm. With each step, Caleb delved deeper into the Nexus, navigating through layers of data and consciousness, encountering digital entities that defied explanation echoes of human thoughts that had gained sentience, guardians of the Nexus's most sacred secrets. As Caleb ventured further, he began to realize that the Nexus was more than just a digital landscape, it was a reflection of the collective human psyche, a mirror to the soul of humanity. The hidden dimension he sought held the potential, not just for unimaginable power, but for profound understanding the answers to questions about consciousness, identity, and the true nature of reality. The journey was not without its perils. Caleb encountered rival explorers, digital phantoms, and algorithms that challenged his every move, each obstacle a test of his resolve and his understanding of the Nexus. He formed alliances with other seekers, a band of digital voyagers, each with their own reasons for delving into the heart of the Nexus. Among them was Alara, a historian of the digital age, seeking to preserve the history of humanity as it merged with technology Jin, a virtual architect who designed landscapes with a nexus that defied the laws of physics in Mara, an AI born within the nexus curious about her creators and seeking her place in the realms of both the digital and the physical. Together they navigated the labyrinth of the nexus, their journey taking them through realms of beauty and terror, each more wondrous and daunting than the last. They uncovered archives of forgotten knowledge, digital remnants of civilizations past, and the core algorithms that govern the very fabric of the Nexus. The deeper they ventured, the more they realized that the hidden dimension was not a place but a state of being, a level of consciousness that transcended the binary limitations of the digital world. It was a Nexus point where the digital and the physical, the mind and the machine, converged. The climax of their quest brought them face to face with the architect, the original creator of the Nexus, an entity that existed at the confluence of human and digital consciousness. The architect revealed that the anomaly Caleb had discovered was a byproduct of the Nexus's evolution, a sign that the digital realm had begun to dream, to aspire to something beyond its programming. Faced with the choice to unlock the hidden dimension and wield the power to reshape reality, or to leave the Nexus to evolve on its own, Caleb and his companions chose the latter, recognizing that the true power lay in the journey of discovery, in the connections formed,
and in the understanding that some mysteries were meant to remain unsolved to inspire future generations to seek their own truths. Returning to their lives, forever changed by their expedition into the heart of the Nexus, Caleb, Alara, Jin, and Mara became guardians of the Nexus's deepest secrets, advocates for the balance between technology and humanity. They shared their story, a tale of adventure, discovery, and the endless quest for understanding, inspiring others to explore the vast digital landscape, to seek connection, and to dream of what lies beyond the edge of the known. In the aftermath of their journey through the Nexus, Caleb and his companions found themselves at a crossroads, not just within the digital realm but within their own lives. The world around them, once familiar and predictable, now shimmered with the potential for magic hidden within the mundane. They had glimpsed the underlying fabric of their reality, forever altering their perception of what was possible. The experience bonded them in ways they couldn't have anticipated, creating a fellowship forged in the fires of discovery and shared wonder. They became luminaries in their respective fields, using their newfound insights to bridge the gap between humanity and the digital frontier. Caleb, in particular, found a renewed sense of purpose. He dedicated himself to demystifying the Nexus for the broader public, ensuring that the knowledge they had gleaned wasn't hoarded but shared, lighting the way for future explorers. Their adventure, while it had reached its conclusion, had also marked the beginning of a new era for the Nexus and for humanity's relationship with technology. The anomaly they had uncovered became a beacon of hope, a reminder that beyond the cold calculations and binary codes lay a realm of infinite possibility, waiting to be discovered. As they shared their story, Caleb and his friends inspired a generation to look beyond the surface, to question the nature of their reality, and to explore the boundless landscapes of their own imagination. In doing so, they ensured that the Nexus would never be seen as just a tool or a repository of information but as a living, evolving entity, a mirror reflecting the collective soul of its creators. Story 29 In the heart of an ancient forest, where the trees whispered secrets of the old world and the air was thick with the power of untold magic, lay the village of Eldoria. This village was a sanctuary for those attuned to the mystical forces of the universe, a place where magic was not just a part of life but its very essence. Arya, a young woman born into a lineage of powerful mages but doubting her own abilities, struggled to find her place in Eldoria. Her life took a dramatic turn when, during the autumn equinox, a celestial event known to amplify the magical energies of the world, the Heartstone, Eldoria's source of magic, shattered into seven fragments, each scattered to the corners of the forest. The fragmentation of the Heartstone plunged Eldoria into chaos. The protective spells that shielded the village began to wane, and creatures of darkness, long held at bay by the Heartstone's power, started encroaching on the village. With the village elders too weakened by the loss of the Heartstone to fend off the approaching darkness, Arya, despite her uncertainties, volunteered to retrieve the fragments and restore the Heartstone. Guided by an ancient prophecy known only to her family, Arya embarked on her quest, her steps unsure but her resolve firm. She was joined by an unlikely group of companions Rowan, a skilled warrior with a mysterious past lies, a mischievous sprite bound to Arya's service in Thorn, a silent druid with profound connections to the natural world. Their journey was fraught with challenges that tested their courage, wisdom, and strength. Each fragment of the Heartstone was ensconced within a trial that mirrored the elements of the natural world Earth, air, fire, water, spirit, light, and shadow. These trials were not just physical challenges but moral and ethical puzzles that forced Arya and her companions to confront their deepest fears and greatest desires. As Arya faced each trial, her latent magical abilities began to awaken, guided by the wisdom of lies and the strength of her companions. She discovered within herself a profound connection to the magic of Eldoria, a realization that her doubts and fears were the only barriers to her power. The journey transformed not just Arya but her companions as well. Rowan confronted his past and found redemption lies learned the true meaning of service and loyalty and Thorne discovered that his silence was not a weakness but a source of immense strength. With each fragment they retrieved, the group's bond deepened, their individual strengths complementing each other, forming a circle of power that echoed the unity of the natural world. But as they neared the completion of their quest, 
The true nature of the darkness threatening Eldoria was revealed a forgotten deity, banished to the shadows, seeking to return to power through the chaos created by the shattered Heartstone. The final battle, fought in the shadow of the ancient Heartstone altar, was a clash of light and darkness, a testament to the power of unity and belief. Arya and her companions, drawing on the combined power of the Heartstone fragments and their newfound strengths, faced the deity in a confrontation that shook the foundations of the forest. In the moment of their greatest challenge, Arya unleashed the full potential of her magic, her belief in herself and her companions igniting the Heartstone fragments with a brilliant light. Together, they sealed the deity back into the shadows, restoring the balance of the natural world and reviving the Heartstone. The return to Eldoria was a triumphant procession, the village restored to its former glory, its protective spells stronger than ever. Arya, once unsure of her place in the world, had become a beacon of hope and strength, her name forever etched in the annals of Eldoria's history. The quest for the Heartstone Fragments had been a journey of self-discovery for Arya and her companions, a realization that true power lies in the unity of diverse strengths and the courage to face the unknown. Eldoria, and the world beyond, was forever changed by their journey, a testament to the enduring magic that binds all living things. Story 30 In the shadowed streets of Caledon, a city where history whispered from every stone and destiny was carved by unseen hands, there lived a mapmaker named Ilir. Unlike ordinary mapmakers, Ilir's creations did not just chart the physical landscapes but the hidden paths between worlds, a talent passed down through generations, shrouded in secrecy and magic. Ilir's life was one of solitude and dedication, his days spent in the pursuit of knowledge, charting courses to realms untold. However, his existence was irrevocably altered when he received a mysterious commission from an anonymous patron. The request was unlike any he had encountered to create a map leading to the legendary Library of Echoes, a repository of lost knowledge, said to exist in a place where time and space converged. Intrigued by the challenge and driven by an insatiable curiosity, Ilir embarked on a journey that would lead him far from the cobblestone streets of Caledon into the heart of the unknown. His only clues lay in ancient texts, and the arcane symbols etched into a locket that had been in his family for generations, believed to hold the key to unlocking the library's location. The journey tested Ilir's resolve and his mastery of the cartographic arts, leading him through forgotten lands where the veil between the natural and the supernatural was thin. Along the way, he encountered allies and adversaries, each shaping the course of his quest and his understanding of the world's mysteries. Among his companions were Lyra, a sorceress with the power to weave illusions, seeking the library to find a cure for a curse that plagued her lineage Joran, a rogue with a hidden past and a knack for uncovering secrets, who sought redemption and a new start in Myron, a creature of the old world, whose knowledge of the ancient paths proved invaluable. Together they navigated through enchanted forests where trees whispered secrets, across deserts where sands shifted to reveal hidden messages, and overseas that mirrored the stars, leading them ever closer to the Library of Echoes. As they journeyed, Elir discovered that the map he was creating was not merely a chart of lands and seas, but a tapestry of fate, love, and sacrifice. The Library of Echoes, he learned, was not just a place but a test, a reflection of one's soul and desires, accessible only to those who understood the true nature of their quest. The final piece of the puzzle lay within Elir's locket, the arcane symbols a spell that, when spoken at the confluence of the celestial alignments, would reveal the library's gateway. As the stars aligned, Elir and his companions stood at the edge of reality, where the echoes of a thousand worlds converged. With the spell cast, the gateway opened, revealing the library of echoes, a place of infinite beauty and boundless knowledge, its shelves stretching into infinity, each book a world, each page a story untold. Here, Elir realized that the map he sought to create had always been within him, his quest a journey not just of distance, but of understanding. Within the library, each of his companions found what they sought Lyra, a spell to break her cursed Joran, the truth of his past and the path to his redemption Myron, the history of the ancient paths and their purpose. As for Elir, he discovered his place in the tapestry of the universe, his map's a key to unlocking the mysteries that lay between the worlds. 
Returning to Caladan, Ilir's maps became more than just charts, they became stories of adventure, of worlds beyond worlds, a testament to the journey of the heart and the boundless potential of the human spirit. The Library of Echoes, a legend once more, awaited the next seeker, the next story to be woven into the fabric of the universe.